Cassidy, the Charity Case. The blanket of pure white snow seemed to sparkle in the early morning light. The pack house was buzzing with excitement about the upcoming festivities. Tomorrow was my birthday, not that anyone cared or even remembered, because it was also the birthday of the Thorn Triplets. The Thorn Triplets were the pride and joy of the Winter Moon Pack. They were the sons of Alpha Romeo Thorn. They were filthy rich, devilishly handsome, and disgustingly arrogant. All the young she-wolves adored them wholeheartedly and stroked their egos on a daily basis. I was cursed to share a birthday and a home with them. At the tender age of nine, my parents left the pack to go rogue and had not been seen or heard from since. They left no instructions regarding their wishes for me, so I was taken into the pack house under the care of Alpha Romeo and his wife, Ronnie. As if I had not been devastated enough, I now had three 12-year-old tormentors. The identical triplet sons of the Alpha were in order of birth, Alex, Felix, and Calix. They despised me and ensured that I knew I was beneath them. My parents had incurred a huge debt. Thus, I had to earn my keep and repay my debt by doing as many chores as possible, while the triplets enjoyed an idyllic childhood in the very same house. In some packs, the new Alpha ascends at age 18 when they first shift, but in mine, the age for ascension was 21. Thus, tomorrow, on November 11th, the triplets would turn 21 and take over the pack while I would turn 18 and experience my first shift. 18 was also the minimum age where werewolves found their fated mate, but I did not care about that. All I wanted was to come of age so I could leave this hell behind. At least the pack house had beautiful scenery. We were close to the North Pole, so snow was an everyday affair, though there was no sign of Santa Claus. I certainly did not expect any birthday presents this November or Christmas presents come December. The pack made it clear that I owed them money and they were subtracting everything they did not spend on me from the huge debt. They also subtracted my wages from the debt, so I was never given any money. I was allowed food, clothes, and shelter. The basics. I slowly got out of bed. The sun was just peeking out from behind the snow-covered horizon. Everything glistened. I gazed out my window at the wintry terrain. I sighed. I had to start making breakfast for everyone. Despite the huge size of the pack house with its luxurious bedrooms and bathrooms, I was given a small empty storage room to stay in. I had a cot, a shelf of secondhand books, and a single drawer full of secondhand clothes. The other drawers contained extra cleaning supplies, as I did the housekeeping work also. I used the common room's bathroom, showering quickly. I looked at myself in the mirror. My parents had named me Chastity, but everyone in the pack called me Charity. This was started by the triplets as a joke because they said it so often. Even decent pack members thought it was my real name. I was so shy and scared as a child that I never bothered to correct them, so it had stuck. I detangled my waist-length dark blonde curls and put them up in a huge bun. Whenever I left them down, the triplets would pull my hair ever since we were little. They had not grown out of this habit even in adulthood. I sighed. There were dark circles forming under my large brown eyes. My light brown skin looked sallow. I had been overworking myself, or rather, the Thorn family had been overworking me. They used to have a maid and a cook with me as the sole assistant of both, but they had fired them last month after numerous conflicts between them and the spoiled triplets. For the past month, I had been drowning in work while attending my final year of high school. I had seven more months of high school before I could leave this place. That was the deal. At 18 and after high school, I got my freedom and whatever I had paid off by then would be the end of it. The current Alpha and Luna seemed to think they were being extremely generous. The pack house had a really good heating system. So despite the fact that outside looked like the frigid tundra, inside was pretty warm. I put on a long-sleeved white baby doll top that covered my behind as I was wearing just black leggings underneath. I started on breakfast. 
As it was the triplets' birthday week, and they would soon be alphas, every day was a feast day. I made waffles, pancakes, bacon, scrambled eggs and sausages. I put the butter and maple syrup on the table. I made coffee. I quickly drank some sweet milky coffee for some energy and started setting the table. Luna Ronnie entered the dining room, eyeing me, scrutinizing my handiwork. She was a tall woman with dark brown long straight hair, pale skin, and green eyes. The table looks nice, she said, a rare compliment. But have you washed all the wares? Wash them all before you eat. Alpha Romeo sauntered in, kissing his Luna gently. He nodded in approval at the breakfast spread. I smiled feebly at him. I heard heavy footsteps on the stairs, and I took a deep breath. The triplet terrors were coming. They towered over me at six feet and four inches each, exactly a foot taller than me. They resembled their father with their shoulder-length, thick, shiny black hair, chiseled faces, baby blue eyes, dimples, and chin clefts. As they were alphas, they were all broad-shouldered and muscled, blessed with super speed and super strength, even beyond what was considered extraordinary for a werewolf. They were perfectly identical and perfectly heinous, or at least they were to me. Their deep voices boomed as they shouted excitedly, shoving each other playfully. They would be 21 tomorrow, but they still acted like they were 12. Alex was the eldest and the most serious and severe. He would surely rule with an iron fist and a surly demeanor. Felix, as the middle triplet, loved being the center of attention and was naturally filled with wisecracks, jokes, and quips. Classic middle child. The youngest, Calix, was the charmer, a professional sweet talker and mommy's favorite. He almost treated me like I was human. Did you make all of this, Charity? asked Calix, immediately trying to pull my hair out of its bun. I nodded, dodging him, only to bump into Felix, who smirked and slipped my hair tie off. My curls tumbled down all around me. Felix and Calix laughed. Stop, I implored them, reaching for my only hair tie. Felix held it high above my head. He threw it to Alex, who caught it and put it in his pocket. I tried to lunge towards Alex, but Felix grabbed me. Felix and Alex started shoving me back and forth between them like I was a ball and they were playing catch. I give up, I give up, I said while they snickered. Calix said, all right, cut it out. Let her go wash the wares. Mom wants the place kept as clean as possible so there'll be less to do tomorrow. The elder two relinquished me. I ran into the kitchen. My heart was racing. I started on the dishes. By the time I was done, the family of five hungry werewolves, four of them from Alpha Stock, had devoured literally everything I made except for one pancake. The chairs were all empty. I went to get the last pancake, but Felix snatched it up. He had zoomed in out of nowhere, fast as a cheetah and quiet as a mouse. I haven't eaten anything, I told him, my eyes wide. Good, you're fat enough as it is, he said, sneering. He ate the pancake in two bites. I sighed. I refused to cry. I had not cried in front of them since the first year of torment when I was nine. My 10th birthday marked a very important vow I had made to myself after crying almost every single day at age nine. The vow was that I would never let the triplets make me cry ever again. I would be strong. I had kept that vow successfully for eight years come tomorrow. The comment stung, though. The triplets were widely regarded as the most handsome, eligible bachelors in the pack. They constantly attacked my weight. I was not overweight, but I had a curvy hourglass figure. My waist was slender. I wore about a size four in clothes, which was small enough in my opinion, but all the triplets had stick-thin size zero girlfriends. I had to take the bus to school. I had thrown on a man's black coat over my white top and leggings, another hand-me-down. I managed to find another hair tie, but this was truly the last one. The pack high school was called Winter Moon High after the pack. Our pack colors, and therefore also the school colors, were white, blue, and silver. 
The whole school was decorated with streamers and balloons in celebration of the new alphas, the triplets. You're so lucky, Charity, said Mina Toros, the most popular girl in my senior year. She tossed her long, dark hair back and pursed her plump red lips in her locker's inside mirror. She was wearing a pink skirt short enough to qualify as a belt. Thank goodness she had opaque tights on underneath. She usually ignored me except for the occasional pronouncement of how lucky I was. The things I'd do to those triplets if I lived in that house, Mina said, licking her lips. You'd have to drop out, squealed her best friend, the second most popular girl, Tina Gregory. You'd get pregnant the first month there. Tina had flawless dark brown skin with curly hair. She was tall and wife-like and also wore a pink skirt short enough to be a belt with opaque tights. Mina and Tina usually matched as though they were twins. Mina cackled at Tina's joke. You know, Charity, said Mina suddenly, you're not totally hideous. Gee, thanks. Okay, I said, clutching my books. The girls were blocking my locker, which was sandwiched between their two lockers. Lucky me indeed. Yeah, agreed Tina. Your hair is actually pretty. You're like a biracial Goldilocks. I smiled. That sounded like a real compliment. Thanks, Tina, I said. Oh, and those triplets are the three bears, shrieked Mina. If I were their Goldilocks, I'd make sure everything was just right. Get it? Or too big, said Tina, giggling. That means one of the triplets has to be too small, I said softly. Being werewolves, Mina and Tina heard me and they burst out laughing. Wow, I was actually getting along with them for five minutes. That was a good one, Charity. Surprising, said Tina, looking at me like she was now seeing me for the first time. Yeah, said Mina, giving me the same strange appraising look. You know, if you had the money, imagine how cute you could look. I fidgeted uncomfortably, suddenly hyper aware of the patches in my clothes. Mina and Tina strutted off and I hurriedly opened my locker and got out my math book. Mr. Johnson, who coached football and taught math, looked like he should be an alpha too. He was huge and really attractive for a teacher. He was married though to his mate, the art teacher, Miss Johnson. He handed out our graded tests while Tina and Mina made flirty faces at him. Those flirty faces were not doing them any good. I noticed they got an F and an F minus respectively. I did not know F minus existed before today. He smiled at me and winked. My heart skipped a beat. A plus as usual, math champ, he boomed. Mr. Johnson was one of the few people in my life who is nice to me. Mina and Tina, see me after class, Mr. Johnson said. After class, Ashton Peters, a tall buff redhead who played football and was well-liked in the pack, pretended to knock into my desk. The stack of papers on my desk went flying all over the room. Mr. Johnson spotted it. Stay and help her pick those up, Ashton, my boy, boomed Mr. Johnson. Ah, coach, I'll be late for football practice, he whined. And we'll be late for cheerleading practice, said Mina and Tina in unison, pouting. I'm the coach, Ashton. Go ahead and be late. I'll explain to your cheerleading coach, okay, girls, said Mr. Johnson. Ashton grumbled. He glared at me as if this were my fault. He started picking up papers at werewolf speed, which caused the ones I was picking up to fly around due to the displaced wind. I eavesdropped on the meeting with Mina and Tina. Mina, Tina, I'm giving you a homework assignment to make up those grades. If you don't ace it, there won't be any cheerleading, he said. The girls gasped. He handed them a stack of papers each and told them they could work on it together and that he set the questions himself so that they would not find the answers online. I snatched up the last few papers from the floor and took the stack Ashton was handing me without looking at me. Thanks, I said softly to him. He glanced down at me, surprised by my thanks. He looked a little guilty all of a sudden. Mr. Johnson left the room, leaving Mina and Tina looking dejected. Ashton grabbed the hair tie from my hair just like Calix had this morning. My curls came tumbling down again. I shrieked. I was so fed up. 
Ashton laughed and ran away to football practice. There went my last hair tie, and my birthday was tomorrow. Aren't you going to cheerleading? I asked the girls, actually feeling sorry for them as they had been sort of nice earlier. No, said Mina. What's the use? We'll never ace this homework, so we'll fail the class and be banned from the squad anyway, explained Tina. I walked up to them and looked at the homework assignment. I snorted. I could get 100% in this in my sleep. I was suddenly struck by an idea. Remember how you girls said I had potential, I said looking at them? They shrugged. I'll do the assignment, and you copy it over in your handwriting and ace it, okay? I offered. The girls squealed. They jumped up hugging each other and me. Wait, said Mina, raising her eyebrows. What's the catch? asked Tina, narrowing her eyes. I'm turning 18 tomorrow too, I said. They gasped. You have the same birthday as the triplets? Mina asked. Wait, that means everyone ignores your birthday like every single year, said Tina. It was my turn to shrug. And they will this year too, but I at least want to feel special. I'm going to shift for the first time at midnight, and who knows? I might see my mate at the big party. Not that I care, I rambled. You want to look hot, is that it? Mina said, smirking. Yeah, you want us to make you over? Tina asked, smiling. I nodded. Chapter 2. Makeover I was supposed to go home immediately after school to help with the preparations for the huge birthday party tomorrow night for the triplets. But I had to do the assignment for the girls and they had to make me over. I knew I would pay for it later, but whatever. The Thorns had hired a party planner. They should be okay for a few hours without their werewolf Cinderella. I did the assignment for the girls literally in the car on the way to the mall. It was that easy. Math was my thing. I was a nerd in general, and I was proud of this, even though werewolves prized brawn and beauty over brains any day. The girls were impressed. They quickly copied it over, sitting in the freezing car parking lot with the heater turned up. Mina drove a sports car. I didn't know what kind, but I knew that Mina and Tina were almost as rich as the Alpha and his family. They dragged me into the mall, squealing excitedly as though I was doing them a favor, even when it came to the makeover. I reminded them I had no money. They rolled their eyes and ignored me. I guessed I could consider the stuff they bought as part of the deal. I tried on outfit after outfit. Mina and Tina raided each one and seemed to have a blast. This was actually kind of fun. They encouraged me to pick out a lot of mini skirts and mini dresses. They said I had great legs, even though the triplets called me fat. Honestly, the clothes they picked for me did look great. I had some trouble walking in heels, but the girls made me practice in the store like it was a runway. They pretended to be on the catwalk, too. They were so confident. I had to marvel at them. Next, they showed me what makeup to wear and how to style my hair at Tina's house. They did a test run. I looked in Tina's floor-length mirror and my jaw dropped. I had on high-heeled black ankle boots with a mini pleated black skirt. I was wearing black stockings as it was cold out, even for a werewolf. My long-sleeved white top had a sweetheart neckline that was really flattering. My hair was so shiny and loose bouncy curls down my back. My skin glowed and I had cat eyeliner and red lips that surprisingly suited me. I hugged Mina and Tina. Did I just make two friends? They drove me back to the pack house, hoping to catch a glimpse of the triplets, but they weren't home yet. Thank goodness. I started helping the party planner sort out all the decorations and the food. It was tomorrow night, but there was a lot to do. I did my own homework in between all of this. I was a master multitasker. I heard three cars parking. It was the triplets. Alpha and Luna were out shopping for even more gifts, despite the fact that I already wrapped like a dozen gifts. The party planner was a bleach blonde in her 30s who was obsessed with the hunkiness of the triplets. She seemed to dislike me even though I was the only one helping her. 
She had been over every day this week and always tried to make me look bad in front of the triplets. I wanted to tell her that they already hated me so she could relax. Her name was Rhonda something. I kept forgetting her last name. The triplets walked in. They each had their arm around a girl. They had a different girlfriend every two months or so. It didn't make sense learning the girls' names. Also, the triplets were anxious to find their real mate. They were not sure if they had three separate mates or just one mate to share. It sounds crazy, but when it came to identical multiples like twins and triplets, they usually shared a single mate since they had been one egg and one sperm that split to form multiples. So theoretically, identical twins and triplets were naturally occurring clones. Every girl wished she was their mate. That was so crazy to me. The triplets were handsome, but they were awful and three mates sounded so complicated. Rhonda glared at their girlfriends, jealousy evident in her beady eyes. The girls did not stay long and when they left, Rhonda told the triplets I had showed up really late to help her. I sighed. I had been under the table literally as I wrapped tiny presents for door prizes. All the pack members got to pick a mystery present from a huge box tomorrow. I crawled out from under the table to make myself known before they had to look for me. Hiding from them would just set them off. The triplets stared at me, their eyes wide. They looked at each other. I remembered my makeover. I did not think they would notice or even care. Alex licked his lips, trailing his eyes from my head to my toes. I took a step back. Felix looked flabbergasted and Calix smirked at me. Leave it to us, Rhonda, said Felix, recovering his usual haughty sneer. We'll punish her. Rhonda smiled maliciously at me. She was the most immature adult I had ever met, including the triplets, and that was saying something. The triplets had me backed against the kitchen island. I'm sorry, I said. I had to do some extra math for Mr. Johnson. It wasn't a complete lie. The triplets knew Mr. Johnson because they were his football stars back when they went to high school. They also knew I had won math competitions before. They had really enjoyed making fun of me then. Okay, said Felix simply. He took a step towards me. What's all of this? He gestured to my outfit, makeup, and hair. My 18th birthday is tomorrow, too? I'm just trying out how I want to look, I said, looking down, waiting for them to insult me or call me fat. Do you have a boyfriend? Is that it? Asked Alex, anger rising in his voice. Why did he even care? I'm too fat to get a boyfriend, remember? I said, repeating one of their classic insults. Don't play games with us, said Felix softly. Is all of this for your mate? Have you figured out who he is? No, I said. They were acting so strange, like I had done something underhanded. You'll only know for sure tomorrow. Your inner wolf will tell you who your mate is, said Calix. I don't want a mate, I said honestly. I had never had a guy be nice to me, and I could not picture it happening. Why the hell not, Alex asked, like I was crazy for saying that. The triplets were eager to find their real mate. They talked about it every birthday. They would visit other packs hoping to get a whiff of their mate. They thought maybe their mate was younger than them. That would explain why they could not pick up her scent. Only mates who had come of age could be discovered. Because he'd be mean to me and call me names, and I get enough of that from you, I snapped. I should not have snapped. I was a little frightened now. The triplets had not hit me since we were little. The last fight happened when I was 11 and they were 14. I had punched Calix, breaking his nose for calling me fat and nasty with dead parents. My parents' whereabouts had never been confirmed and I always liked to think they were alive. After he had let out a blood-curdling scream and told his elder brothers about his nose, Alex slapped me and then Felix slapped me. Calix had been reluctant, but they made him hit me. They dragged me out to the frozen river behind the pack house. There was a hole in it for fishing. I was small enough to dip in the hole. They had held me under the water until I blacked out. Their parents had been furious. I went to the hospital for hypothermia. 
I never knew what their punishment had been, but after that, we never got physical with each other. Nothing more than a shove. Are you stupid? asked Alex. I shrugged. No werewolf would insult his own mate or be mean to her, said Felix, rolling his eyes. Don't you know anything? added Calix. Okay, thanks. I get it now, I said simply. You dressed up for us, didn't you? said Felix, smirking and rubbing his chin. The other two grinned. My heart leapt a little at the sight of their dimples. I shook my head. What was wrong with me? The triplets were monsters, and good looks did not absolve them of that. Don't make her admit it, said Calix. She's embarrassed, Felix. Admit it. You did this for us, Felix exclaimed, grinning wickedly. He kept coming closer, and my back was pressed against the kitchen island now. Alex was quiet, smiling faintly and watching me closely. I just wanted them to go away. I was so frustrated with my whole life. There would not be a single present for me tomorrow. No one had counseled me about my shift at midnight, and I was scared. I knew it would be painful, and I did not need this from these three privileged assholes who did not deserve the title of Alpha. They were physically Alphas, but they had no integrity. They could not lead this pack. What a joke. I decided to play along. Yeah, okay, I said softly, looking down to feign embarrassment and hugging myself tightly. I dressed up for you. I asked two girls at school to help me. I really did have a math thing, but I went to get dolled up after, so that made me late as well. I'm sorry. I hid my face in my hands, stifling my laughter. They seemed to think I was crying. Hey, you know we aren't the stupid little boys we used to be when we would fight with you, said Alex gently. We're taking over this pack tomorrow, and as you're part of this pack, we just want to know what's going on with you, that's all. Huh? Don't cry, stupid, said Felix, exasperatedly. Don't insult her when you're trying to cheer her up, stupid, said Calix, turning on Felix. Chastity said Calix, using my real name for the first time in nine years. I dropped my hands. I was shocked. I just stared at him. You look pretty, okay, said Calix, winking. My heart skipped a beat. He was bending down. His face was really close to me. Thanks for dressing up for us. I hope you wear an even shorter skirt tomorrow, he said, softly smirking. I rolled my eyes. Alex and Felix burst into laughter. I tried to brush past them, but Felix grabbed my arms and put me back against the island again. My breath hitched in my throat. Did I say you could leave? He asked, his nose brushing against my nose as he bent down towards me. I squirmed in his arms. You need to have respect for your alphas, Charity, Alex said, using my awful nickname. The spell that Calix had cast on me was broken. Damn it, I screamed. Let me go. Three alpha males against one omega female is insane. You have no honor, I cried, struggling against Felix. He released me. We were just playing with you, Charity, said Felix. Good grief, go, run upstairs. I ran upstairs into my room. I locked the door. I sat on my cot, hugging my knees to my chest. The Alpha and Luna came knocking on my door when darkness fell. I went out to them. We almost forgot you have your first shift at midnight, same birthday as the triplets, said Alpha Romeo, rubbing the back of his neck. I smiled. Were they going to counsel me or give me a gift? Yeah, so make sure and be out of the house at least by 11.45 p.m. so you don't break anything or make any mess when you shift, said Luna Ronnie. I nodded. I suppose that was one piece of advice. I left the house at half past 11 wearing my old clothes. I crunched through the snow. It was pitch black. I sighed. I was nervous. I was scared of the pain. I wish my parents could be here. For the first nine years of my life, they had been in and out of rehabs. They were inconsistent, but they actually seemed to love me a lot. They would always make my birthdays and holidays special, no matter how high they were. They were deeply in love with each other as mates, and back then, I almost looked forward to having a mate of my own. 
It was almost midnight. I did not want to rip my clothes, so I removed them and stood in the snow, naked and barefoot, my curls covering me to my waist. If I had not been a werewolf, I would have frozen to death. Midnight came, and I felt my bones breaking. He shivered. That scent was driving him crazy. He could not sleep. It was all over everything. He felt as if he recognized the smell, but he could not say exactly who it was. Surely he would have noticed and remembered someone who smelled this good. He could not take it anymore when the sun came up. He banged on his brother's doors. They greeted him, still half asleep. What's wrong, little bro? asked Alex, concern evident on his face. It better be good. It's six o'clock in the morning. We partied last night and we're partying tonight, said Felix, doing a little dance and yawning. Smell my room, said Calix. His brothers laughed. He walked away from them. They followed him. Enough, said Felix, storming into Calix's room. Felix stopped in his tracks. Alex entered and his eyes widened. Oh my God, said Felix. What is that? The Alpha started sniffing about his brother's room. Little bro, who was in your room? Asked Alex sharply. You've been with our mate, said Felix, growling. You're keeping her all to yourself. No, I don't know whose scent it is, and it's driving me crazy, said Calix with tired eyes. Our mate's been in this room, said Felix gleefully. She found us. Oh, I can't wait to get on her, Felix growled again. What about Sandra, Tanya, and Avery, asked Calix, mentioning their current girlfriends. We've only been dating them like a couple weeks. They know they're not our mates, so it was a temporary thing. I'm going to end it with Tonya over the phone, said Felix dismissively. Yeah, agreed Alex. If we can find our mate in time for the party, we don't want the girls showing up and harassing her. Yeah, they'd be jealous, said Calix. And there's one of her and three of them, so we better tell them before tonight. The brothers were all in agreement, all sitting on Calix's bed. Who would be in my room, Calix wondered. There's something familiar about the smell, said Alex, smiling. It kind of smells a little like... Alex paused, frowning. He got up and ran down the hallway. He stood in front of the door to Chastity's little makeshift room. The same smell hit him. It made him shiver. Honeysuckle and roses. He sighed. He found her door unlocked and opened it eagerly to reveal an empty room with the cot in the corner made. His face fell. It suddenly dawned on him just how small Chastity's room was compared to the other bedrooms in the house. There were empty guest bedrooms bigger than this room. Why didn't his parents give her one of those? His brothers came up behind him. Felix looked dumbfounded. Calix walked into Chastity's room and lay on her cot, deeply inhaling her scent. I'm going to wait for her to come back right here, he said, curling up on her tiny cot. It was comically small for the six-foot-four alpha. I want to go get her right now, said Felix, his eyes worried. We have a lot of talking to do. Relax, Felix, said Alex. Our mate already lives with us, so we're good, said the eldest alpha, grinning. No, we're not good, said Felix, staring at them. Our mate is Charity. Charity. Don't call her that, snarled Calix, his blue eyes turning black. Sorry, sorry, it's a bad habit. Chastity, Felix said. Her real name felt good to say out loud. What's your problem? asked Alex. He was looking through Chastity's things, thinking of all the stuff he was going to buy her. She hardly had anything, so she would be easy to surprise. It was her birthday, too, after all. We have to go to the mall as soon as it opens at 10, he told his younger brothers. It's Chastity's birthday, too, and I'm sure Mom and Dad didn't get her anything. Are you hearing yourself? asked Felix. Again, what is your problem? Alex asked Felix. Calix opened his eyes to glare at Felix. Chastity is our mate. We had no idea because she was not of age until today, Felix said, waving his arms around like a madman. Calix and Alex were not following. 
we've treated Chastity bad. When she realizes she's our mate, she's going to reject us, said Felix. Calic shot up into a sitting position. No, she's not, the youngest said. No, she can't. We've been waiting three years for our mate. Chastity said she didn't want a mate, remember, said Felix, spelling it out for them. Yeah, said Alex, but when the mate bond actually hits her, she'll be putty in our hands. Calix beamed, grinning at Alex. Yep, Calix agreed. Felix rolled his eyes. Do you remember why Chastity did not want a mate? She says because he'd be mean to her like we were. Her mate is literally us. Calix and Alex were starting to look worried. She's going to freak out, said Felix. She's going to try to leave. Remember, she's been talking about turning 18, finishing high school, and leaving. Alex smirked. She has seven more months of high school. It's November. We have until June or July with her to convince her otherwise. Felix calmed down a little, thinking it over. Calix grinned wickedly, his dimples showing, mischief in his baby blue eyes. Chastity might hate us now, but by next summer, we'll be making her submit. His elder brothers burst into laughter. Chapter 4 Dangerously Cute Chastity's POV I had to wake up at the crack of dawn as usual on the day of the party despite going to bed after midnight. I was so tired. I passed far away from the triplets' rooms as I could so I would not have to smell those delicious scents. I had to keep away from them. I could not bear to look them in the eyes if just their smell was driving me wild now that I was 18. How could fate be so cruel? I wondered if they would be horrible mates. I would not let it reach to that. I had never even had one boyfriend. Now I had three mates? What would I be expected to do? How would I handle that? I felt overwhelmed just thinking about it. There was a heat in the lower part of my tummy when I thought about all three of them and me. I would not even know who was doing what to me. I bit my lip. I was getting aroused again. I quickly pushed those thoughts away. Maybe they will reject me outright, I thought. My heart threatened to cleave in two or maybe three when I thought about that. My inner wolf whimpered. I hushed her soothingly. My wolf kept pushing thoughts of the triplets into my mind as I worked on all the last-minute party details. Felix would be the roughest. Calix would be the gentlest. I was not sure what Alex would be like. He would probably boss me around, telling me to have respect for him as his mate and Luna. A chill crept through me. Luna. The current Luna hated me. She would not want me as her successor. I did not think the current Alpha would care much. Around half past five in the morning, Rhonda, the party planner, showed up to help. Where are the birthday boys? She said excitedly. I rolled my eyes. My inner wolf growled. She was possessive. I looked at Rhonda's micro miniskirt and tiny tube top. I was surprised she didn't freeze to death on the way here. She was holding three identical baby blue gift bags. They're asleep, I said, frowning. They usually don't wake up until noon on weekends. Oh, she said. She looked crestfallen. She put a coat over her tiny outfit, probably to unveil it at noon. Around six o'clock, I heard heavy footsteps. It couldn't be. The triplets woke up early? I ran out of the house without thinking. I shifted. Rhonda ran out after me, her eyes wide with shock. I went bounding through the snow. I had ripped my clothes shifting suddenly like that. I needed to clear my head and stay clear of the triplets until I decided what to do. Third person. This is stupid, said Calix. I need my mate right now. I want chastity. He stormed out of her room and down the stairs with his brothers on his heels. He was surprised to find Rhonda in the kitchen. Where's chastity? asked Calix, still sleep-deprived and grumpy. Hey, sleepyhead, good morning, cooed Rhonda. Have you seen Chastity, Rhonda? asked Alex. I have presents for the birthday boys, she squealed. Is she here? Felix asked, getting annoyed. Who? asked Rhonda, handing each triplet a gift bag. 
Thanks, Rhonda, said Alex. Chastity, where is she? Rhonda frowned. She shifted and went for a run, Rhonda said. Oh, yeah, said Alex. She can shift now, he said, grinning. He was excited to see her wolf and go running through the snow with her. Okay, said Rhonda, rolling her eyes. Since when do you guys care about charity? Calix snarled. Alex glared at Rhonda. Rhonda was taken aback. It's Chastity, corrected Felix, though he was the one who originally gave her the nickname. Chastity's POV I had been running for a few hours all around the Packlands. I started to tire out. I knew I would be in pain when I shifted back. My wolf was strong, but my human form was weak. I had never been athletic. I could not shift back without going home. I was stealthy on my way back to the pack house. I saw that one of the triplets' cars was gone. Hopefully they had all gone. I shifted back and snuck in a side door. I crept up the stairs as quickly as I could. I squealed when I reached my room. The door was closed and all three scents were incredibly strong. Were they in there? I peeked under the door. I sighed in relief and went in. I put on my clothes. My clothes smelled like Alex. They had all been here. All of them. Recently. Their scents were heavenly. Every single item of clothing and every book smelled like Alex. The bed smelled intensely like Calix. Felix's scent was concentrated near the door. They knew. That's the only thing that would have led them to my room. They enjoyed teasing me, but in the last nine years, they had never set foot in my room. Not a single time. I went back to the kitchen to find a seething party planner. Rhonda was furious at me for taking off. The triplet's scents were here, too. They probably had not noticed her skimpy outfit. I laughed to myself as I worked alongside her. I was incredibly jumpy, expecting the triplets to return at any minute. I dared not ask Rhonda where they had gone. The time passed by quickly. Before I knew it, it was four o'clock. The party started at six in the evening, and I needed enough time to get ready. I was walking up the stairs when the Luna spotted me. Oh, hey, I'm so sorry, but one of the servers called in sick, so we'll need you to help out with the serving, okay? She asked, though it was not really a question. It was not like I could refuse. I did have one condition, though. That's fine, but I'm not wearing a uniform, I said, laughing. She laughed, too, as if she had not even considered it, but I bet she would have made me wear one if I had not brought it up first. Every pack member would be here soon. Thankfully, the pack house was huge with a sprawling living room. The DJ was setting up in there now. All the decorations were hung and the lights were dimmed. I wondered if I would have to watch the triplets dance with their girlfriends. They would obviously be at the party. I sighed. I needed to stop feeling entitled to being with the triplets. They were my mates, but they hated me and I hated them. I showered methodically. My muscles ached. I knew I would pay for that long run. My skin no longer looked sallow, though. It was golden and had a healthy glow. My dark circles were still there, though. My body needed some rest, but I was always working or studying. I sighed. My hair looked shiny. I let it down. Mina and Tina seemed to think my dark blonde curls were my best feature. I put on the outfit they had picked out for me, a black sequin mini dress and high heels. I did my makeup the way they had taught me. I was pleasantly surprised with the result. I spritzed on some perfume and ran down the stairs. People started arriving a bit early. I greeted them and took their coats. Everyone called me Charity, genuinely thinking that that was my name, and it was too late to correct them. I would be leaving this place in a matter of months. My inner wolf growled at me. I sighed. I noticed Sandra, Tonya, and Avery all arrived together, holding hands, looking disgruntled in their mini dresses. Their eyes were red. They approached me to talk for the first time ever. Hey, uh, Charity, said Sandra, tossing her flaming red hair back. Hey, girl, 
said Tonya. She had long, straight black hair and olive skin. Nice to see you again, Avery said with a smile. She had shoulder-length blonde hair. Hey, girls, welcome. Please help yourselves. Feel free, I said awkwardly, motioning toward the refreshment tables. Have you seen the triplets today? Sandra asked, narrowing her green eyes at me. No, I said honestly in the most innocent tone I could muster. Okay, well, here's the thing. Tonya paused, exchanging glances with the other two. They broke up with us, blurted out Avery. The other two glared at her. Well, it's true, she said to them. My heart was pounding. I'm so sorry to hear that, I said stiffly. They said they found their mate, Sandra added tensely. I felt lightheaded. I stumbled backwards a little but caught my balance, leaning against the wall. They brushed us off. They said we'd only been together six weeks, Tonya said, folding her arms. That was true. The longest relationships the triplets had were all about two months, so the girls were only missing out on two more weeks. So, since you live here, we figured you'd know who she is, said Avery. Their mate. I braced myself against the wall. I felt nauseated. The triplets had already ended their relationships. For me? They would have ended them anyway, but I felt awful for the three girls. I bit my lip. Did that mean the triplets wanted me? Like, right away? They had wasted no time breaking up with their girlfriends. I didn't answer the girl's question. Please excuse me, girls, I said feebly. I went to the kitchen. What was I going to do when the triplets arrived? Third person. The triplets were late for their own party, after spending so much time bickering at the mall over what to get Chastity. They ended up getting her a whole host of things and getting it wrapped and gift bagged at the mall. They loaded the stuff out of the car, greeting guests as they entered the pack house. They narrowly avoided a confrontation with their three ex-girlfriends. All three girls stormed out together, hand in hand. At least they had each other. They showered and got dressed in a matter of minutes. All three in matching black blazers, black trousers, and baby blue shirts. She's not in her room, said Calix anxiously. Of course not, said Felix. Mom and Dad are making her help with the party. Okay, before we do anything else, we need to have a serious conversation with Chastity, said Alex, the alpha even among alphas. His younger brothers nodded. Chastity's POV I stayed hidden in the kitchen until the Luna came in and found me doing nothing. She glared at me and handed me a tray of champagne glasses to serve so the current alpha could make a toast to his sons before he officially handed over the position. My mates would be alphas in a matter of minutes. I passed out the champagne. Everyone smiled. The pack members were in a great mood. I even got a few thank yous and a few compliments on my outfit. I was a really low-ranking member of the pack, but because I served the Alpha and his family, everyone knew my name, or at least they knew my cruel nickname. I refilled the tray with more glasses and more champagne. I spotted the party planner in an even skimpier outfit than this morning, if that were possible. I remembered the blue gift bag she had brought. I had not gotten my mates anything, even though I had helped put this party together. I had literally zero dollars and zero cents. I hope they understood that. Mina and Tina grinned at me. I hugged them. They actually seemed to like me now. Our hug elicited a few glares and disapproving looks from older PAC members nearby. Mina and Tina were the daughters of rich PAC members, and some people considered me trash because my parents borrowed a lot of money from the PAC funds and PAC members. I had been so little then. I felt it was unfair to blame me, but I was the only one around to blame. I pushed those old memories away. Mina and Tina said happy birthday to me. I was so happy, I got a little teary-eyed. They were the only ones who had remembered or said anything. They each handed me a sparkly pink gift bag. I was shocked. 
They had already bought me clothes as a part of our deal. Girls, thank you. I'm shocked, I said, taking the bags. It's nothing, said Mina. We dropped off our homework assignments during Saturday morning football practice because we were so excited, said Tina. Just like you promised, we aced it. He corrected it right in front of us, added Mina. I grinned. They flipped their hair in unison. They were wearing identical hot pink dresses. The Luna caught me socializing, and I quickly scampered off to get more champagne. I handed a glass to the Luna, who smiled coldly. The Alpha took a glass and nodded at me. I almost dropped my tray when I turned around and saw the triplets. They looked unbelievably handsome. My inner wolf was howling. Their scents were out of this world. They were staring at me. I could not read their expressions. I could not be with them, but I could not be without them. I just hoped they would not reject me right away. It was my birthday, too, and I just wanted to enjoy it a little without worrying too much. I offered them the champagne glasses. Alex took the whole tray away from me to his mother's chagrin. He handed the tray to an offended-looking Rhonda. Calix grabbed my hand, causing tingles to shoot through my arm. Felix put his hands on either side of my waist from behind. I felt unexpected heat and bit my lip. Some pack members were regarding us with curiosity. Alex led us up the stairs with Calix pulling me by the hand and Felix gently pushing me forwards as he gripped my waist. They took me to Calix's room and shut the door, locking it. I quickly scurried away from them to the other side of the room, pressing my back against the wall. The spell of seeing my mates for the first time since I had come of age had broken now that we were alone. Don't be scared, Chastity, pleaded Calix, his blue eyes widening with hurt due to me letting go of his hand. He was using my real name. We're not going to hurt you, baby, purred Felix, eyeing me intensely. I was shocked at the pet name. The heat in my body was back. We need to talk, said Alex sternly. Okay, Chastity? At least they were being respectful for once and using my real name, with the exception of Felix, who seemed to think I was already his baby. The brothers sat on Calix's bed on one side of the room. I sat in the chair by his desk with his computer. The chair had wheels. I spun on it a little. I had never been in any of their rooms at all before until early this morning when I inspected Calix's room. The triplets cleaned their own rooms. We had lived together, but emotionally, we were like strangers in a way. I knew the triplets had to have normal personalities outside of bullying me because they were certainly admired by everyone else, and I had seen them be good to others with my own eyes. It stung thinking that they had reserved their venom just for me. What had I done, besides be born unfortunate? Just like that, I broke an eight-year-long promise to myself as the tears streamed down my face without warning. Alex looked despondent. Shh, baby, it's okay, said Felix softly, handing me a tissue. Calix grabbed my hand again and pulled the chair, wheeling it over to them. I was within arm's reach of all three of them now. My heart raced due to fear. My body was really confused when it came to them. I knew they could hear my heartbeat and smell my arousal. As you probably already know, Chastity, Alex said gently, you're our mate, all three of us. Triplets tend to have just one mate because... I know, I said annoyed. I was probably better at science than them. They were always treating me like I was stupid. Normally, they would glare at me for interrupting them and even curse and complain, but they just stared at me intently. Because identical triplets are naturally occurring clones, one fertilized egg that split into three, so one mate. Exactly, said Alex, smiling. I dried my eyes and blew my nose. You smell so good, baby, said Felix. His eyes were black. He reached out and caressed my knee. I shivered. Easy, Felix, warned Alex, removing his brother's hand from my knee. Alex sighed. We're so, so, so sorry, Chastity, murmured Alex. The way we've treated you is disgusting. We won't make any excuses for it. 
We don't deserve you, but we want you as our mate and Luna. We're willing to spend the rest of our lives making everything up to you. I was shocked. I had always wanted an apology. Now I had one, I wasn't sure if it would suffice. We're so sorry, Chastity, said Calix. Please let us love you. I blushed. Calix was always so dramatic. We're really sorry, baby, said Felix. I was pretty sure I would never hear my horrid nickname or my real name come out of him ever again. I was henceforth baby as far as he was concerned. I giggled at that thought. That was the wrong move because it set Felix's wolf off. Oh, you're so cute, growled Felix just before he grabbed me. Chapter 5 Happy Birthday Felix grabbed me before Alex could stop him. He pinned me to the wall, going to mark me. Stop, I squealed, but Felix's eyes were black. His wolf was in control. I was completely not ready for this. I was not even sure if I wanted to be with them. In a flash, his brothers pulled him off of me. They pinned him to the other wall. Come down, bellowed Alex in his alpha voice, making the whole room shake. Felix took a few deep breaths. His eyes slowly turned blue. His brothers walked him back to the bed and they all sat down again. Oh my God, he said, panting. Chastity, he said my name. I'm so sorry, baby. We were back to baby again. It's okay, I said slowly. I laughed half-heartedly. Actually, that's not the worst thing you've done to me by a long shot. That won't even make the top ten. I laughed at my own feeble joke. The triplets looked horrified and guilty. So after Felix has gone and ruined the scrap of a chance we had left, what do you say? said Calix. That actually made me laugh. The brothers all smiled. I had seven more months until high school was over, and I was still angry as hell with the triplets, but I was no fool. Rejecting them would mean I would have to move out. I had no idea what I wanted. My wolf craved them. She was filling my head with positions that I had not known were possible. I had never even been kissed. If I even decided to be with them, only one of them could be my first kiss. My eyes went instinctively to Calix. He grinned. The other two looked a little jealous, wondering why I was staring at just him all of a sudden. I don't know what I want, I told them honestly. That's completely fine, said Calix. Take your time, said Alex. All the time you need, added Felix, who had pinned me to a wall a few moments ago to try to mark me as his mate. Yeah, sure. Okay, that brings us to the second part of this discussion, said Alex. Huh? Happy birthday, Chastity, said the triplets in unison. I smiled. They pulled a lot of gifts out from under Calix's bed. I squealed, and then I felt guilty. I bit my lip and frowned. Baby, what's wrong? asked Felix quickly. I had thought about getting you something, but I really couldn't. I had literally no money, I said apologetically, feeling ashamed. Felix laughed. Baby, we know you have no money. That's okay. You never let me forget it, I muttered. Felix frowned. They started prompting me to open my gifts. There were so many. It was so awkward for me. I had not gotten a single gift in nine years until today. Mina and Nina gave me gifts, and now the triplets had bought the whole mall. I wanted to open all my gifts later in the privacy of my room. I had already put the bags from Mina and Nina in there. Alex, Felix, Calix, I said. They all reacted to their names. They all looked so gleeful. I want to open these later, okay? When I'm thinking about stuff, I said. We wanted to see your face, pleaded Calix. It's not about what we want, interrupted Alex. I smiled. I'm just going to put the gifts in my room. Thank you so much, I said. I approached them shyly. We had never hugged before. Felix snatched me up first, just as I expected. 
He squeezed me tightly, lifting my feet off the ground. I giggled. He let me down. Calix bent down to hug me gently. Alex lifted me by the waist and spun me around like I was a little princess. He put me gently on my feet. I started carrying an armful of gifts to my room. Wait, they all said. You can't stay in that room. It's too small. We will organize the best guest room and turn it into your room, Alex said. This should have made me happy, but it actually made me angry suddenly. So this room isn't good enough for me now, but it was good enough when you didn't give a shit, I snapped. I immediately regretted saying that. I waited for the huge argument to start. They were quiet. If you're not ready for your new room yet, that's okay, but I'm very uncomfortable with you staying there. It's not even a bedroom, and it's a complete disgrace that my parents put you there, said Alex. We did not talk anymore as we moved the gifts to my room and went back down the stairs where everyone was still waiting impatiently for the birthday boys. Boys, said Luna Rani, narrowing her eyes. Where have you been? She seemed shocked to see me coming down the stairs with them. Do another lap to see if anyone needs more champagne, she ordered me. Rhonda handed me a fresh tray filled with glasses. The party planner had a smug look on her face. Alex took the tray from me again and put it on the floor this time. Alex, said Ronnie to her eldest son. Let's start the toast, said Alpha Romeo. The pack members cheered. Everyone gathered around the grand staircase and Alpha Romeo stood a few steps up so that everyone could see him. The triplets pulled me with them to the same step as Alpha Romeo. The Luna, who stood next to her husband, was eyeing me suspiciously. I was pretty sure she was putting two and two together, or in this case, one and three together. Alpha Romeo began his speech. It literally started with him meeting his mate, the Luna, their love, their wedding, honeymoon, childless years, having the triplets, their childhood, their teenage years, and now their manhood and ascension to Alpha's. It made literally no mention of me, despite me being there for the past nine years since the triplets were twelve, but the Alpha and Luna truly viewed me as a servant. So, I knew I should not expect to be mentioned. A lot of people kept glancing at me, wondering why I was there in the limelight. I tried to descend the stairs a few times, but Alex kept grabbing my wrist. Felix put his hand absent-mindedly on my behind. I stifled a gasp. He squeezed it and rubbed it gently. I started to cream my clothes. I glared at him and he blew me a kiss, which many people noticed. I present to you Alpha Alex, Alpha Felix, and Alpha Calix Thorn, the triplet alphas, boomed former Alpha Romeo using his alpha voice for the last time. The pack members cheered. Their screams were deafening. Many girls shrieked and squealed over the triplet alphas. The Alpha triplets went around the room to be congratulated by important pack members. They dragged me with them. No one asked about me, but everyone's eyes darted to me. Finally, the Luna could take it no more. She marched her sons, me, and the former Alpha into the kitchen. The party planner nosily followed us. Since when are you three so close with charity? asked the Luna. It's chastity, Mom, said Felix. Sorry, said the Luna. People truly thought my name was Charity, so I never held it against them. She's our mate, said Alex, getting straight to the point. There was utter silence. And you've accepted her as your mate, said Romeo? I felt a little offended. Of course, said Calix. We want her more than anything. My cheeks burned. And has she accepted, asked the Luna. There was more silence. I want to finish high school while I think about it, I said. The Luna laughed. She wants to live here for as long as possible before she rejects you the day after she graduates high school and then goes off to search for her parents. Mom, said Calix, the Luna's favorite. She stared at him. Honey, I... Chastity has not been treated well here and you know it, said Calix. The Luna sighed. She's our mate, and things around here will reflect that, said Alex firmly. 
The eavesdropping party planner was looking at me with so much envy, I actually feared for my life a little. She hates you three, you know, said Rhonda, the party planner. She thinks you're all arrogant, overrated snobs. I paled. I looked at the triplets, half expecting them to turn on me. Calix had not even been listening to her. He was still pleading with his mother with his eyes. Alex was looking at the big birthday cake, and Felix was still looking at me, smirking. Felix was definitely going to try to sneak into my room tonight. I felt really warm thinking about it. They're old enough to decide, said Romeo. Let's cut the cake with chastity, said Alex. Rhonda wheeled the huge cake out to the guests. Everyone began singing happy birthday and snapping pictures. I knew people wanted me out of the shot. They wanted pictures of the identical triplet alphas and birthday boys, but the guys would not let me go. Calix grabbed one wrist and Alex grabbed the other. Felix was standing behind me, squeezing my waist. This was the first time all three of the triplets had their hands on me, and I felt like fainting. I was so overwhelmed. What was I going to do when they all really got their hands on me? I had thought I did not have to worry about that anytime soon, but looking back on it, I should have worried more because all three brothers snuck me into one of their rooms that very night. Chapter 6 Good Night I had always wanted the Thorn family to give me a proper bedroom, but now that the triplets wanted me to leave my little room, I stubbornly did not want to. Too much was changing too fast. The triplets were really annoyed that I would not stay in any of their rooms or in a guest bedroom. I went to my room and shut my door, locking it. It was after midnight. I had actually used Alex's bathroom to shower because he did not want me using the ground floor one because then I'd have to walk around in my robe to get back to my room, which is what I'd done for the past nine years. I was exhausted, but I was curious about my gifts. Mina got me a designer sparkly baby pink party dress, and Tina got me a designer sparkly baby blue party dress. I smiled. The triplets had gotten me an iPhone, an iPad, and a MacBook. I was shocked. I knew they liked Apple products a lot, but I had never gotten any technological stuff before. This was my first cell phone at 18. I'd need their help to set it up. They also got me a proper winter coat, a baby blue one. It was so pretty. One of the gifts was a small envelope with a bow on it. It was a credit card with a note from the triplets with the pin. Saying it to use to shop for whatever I needed. There was a pair of winter boots, also baby blue. I wondered how they knew my size, but then I remembered Alex's smell on all my clothes and smiled. There was a proper backpack for school. I honestly did not have one and would hold all my books or use a canvas grocery bag. I felt a little teary-eyed thinking about that. I had never really let myself notice all the normal things I did not have. I wiped my eyes hastily in response to a knock on the door. Felix? Come in, I said. Alex. You're driving me crazy, he said. Huh? He scooped me up and carried me out of the room bridal style. Thanks for all the gifts. They're really thoughtful and wonderful, I said softly. I kissed his cheek. He grinned. Calix and Felix were standing at the entrance of Alex's room. Alex carried me into the room and put me on the bed. Calix shut the door and Felix locked it. My stomach clenched. Where's my kiss for the presents? Asked Felix, pointing to his cheek. I jumped up, eager to get away from the bed, and kissed his cheek. He grinned. Calix tapped me on the shoulder. I giggled and he bent down so I could kiss his cheek. Let's get some rest. I couldn't stand that room that's really just a cleaning supplies cupboard, said Alex to Felix, who snickered. Hey! It was true, though. Time for bed, said Calix, moving to turn off the light. I was afraid of the dark and had begged their parents in tears for that nightlight. Calix quickly fetched it from my room. 
I kept waiting for them to make fun of me for being afraid of the dark, but they were arguing amongst themselves. I'm going on two nights no sleep because her scent in my room was driving me crazy, insisted Calix. Okay, so definitely Calix, said Alex. Felix glared at his brothers. You rushed her today in all fairness, Felix, so tomorrow when you're in better control, you'll definitely be one of the two, okay? Tonight it's me and Calix, said Alex. What about what she wants, Felix asked. They looked at me. I'm really tired, I said, not wanting to get in their argument. I was still really confused and a little nervous around them. I wanted to talk about the time they hit me and put me in the ice water, but I couldn't even think about it without getting too upset. I turned on the night light and turned off the bedroom light. I climbed into the middle of the huge bed. It dawned on me what was about to happen. My inner wolf was so excited. The human me was really nervous and unsure. Calix climbed eagerly into bed. Spoon me, he said, and Alex will spoon you. Spoon? I asked. Alex got in on my other side. Felix spoke from the corner next to Alex. Oh, she's so innocent. The brothers all laughed. Can I please show her what spooning is and then I'll go back to the corner, pleaded Felix. Fine, said Alex and Calix in unison. Instead of coming over to me, Felix's hands reached out and snaked around me, pulling me to him. He pulled my back against his front and curved his body around me, putting his arm over me to snuggle me. It was so comfortable. I immediately started to feel sleepy. That's me spooning you, he told me. Now spoon me. He turned away from me. He was much bigger than me, but I snuggled into his back and put my arm around him. She gets it, now bring her over here, said Calix. I was lifted and placed between Calix and Alex. I was not even sure who lifted me, which made me kind of excited. My inner wolf was howling in delight again. I spooned Calix now that I knew what that was, and Alex held me, his nose near my neck. You smell really good, Alex whispered in my ear. Calix's and Alex's body heat was overwhelming. Being sandwiched between them, I could hardly keep my eyes open. I wanted to hate them, all three of them. I wanted to use this opportunity to break their triplet hearts, but my body craved them. I had to fight to not feel happy as Alex whispered to me. He seemed to have a lot he wanted to say to me now that we were lying here in the dark. You're so beautiful, he whispered. I was glad he could not see me blush. I've always thought that, you know. I could not let that one slide. As if, I said, getting annoyed with him again. Yes, I have, he insisted. I've always loved your hair. I've always pulled on the curls. You know that. I considered that part of their bullying. I stole this before I knew you were my mate said Alex, showing me the hair tie he had put in his pocket the other day. I gasped. They had taken my hair tie because they thought my hair was pretty? Guys were so weird. Good night, Chastity, Alex whispered. Good night, Chastity, said Calix. Good night, baby, said Felix. Good night, guys, I said. Can I kiss you? Alex whispered so softly I almost missed it. Um... Okay, I said. Alex kissed my would-be marking spot. The tingles that shot through me made my whole body feel extra warm, and I drifted off into a deep, peaceful sleep. Chapter 7 Good Morning Everything that happened yesterday felt like a dream. Mina and Tina befriending me, all the presents and the triplets' confessions— I was actually afraid to open my eyes in case I found myself in my cot in the cleaning supply room and the triplets hated me again. However, I felt extremely warm. Too warm to be in a bed alone and too comfortable to be in my cot. I moaned, stretching out. It was only about five o'clock in the morning, but that was my usual wake-up time to start making the family's breakfast. I did not want their parents to despise me even more now that I might be interested in their sons. I wondered if I could sneak downstairs and start breakfast. 
The triplets did not wake up until noon on Sunday, but the parents would be up by 7 o'clock. I tried to extricate myself from Alex and Calix. Alex woke up groaning and pulled me back to him. What are you doing? Do you have to use the bathroom or something? He asked groggily. He looked really cute with ruffled hair. I did not have the heart to lie to him. This is the time I usually wake up, I said softly. I have to make you guys breakfast. Calix laughed and yawned. We wake up at, like, noon, don't we? Yeah, but your parents wake up at seven, I said. They'll fend for themselves, don't worry, said Alex, tightening his grip on me. Felix stirred. He snatched me from Alex and Calix when their grip slackened. Hey, Calix protested. Felix draped me across his chest, which was quite comfortable. His hand found my behind again, and he started to squeeze my cheeks. This is what I was afraid of. What are you doing, Felix? asked Alex suspiciously. I'm bonding with my gorgeous mate, said Felix. I remembered Felix eating the last pancake, so I got nothing and telling me I was fat. I winced at the memory. Felix noticed my strange movement. Sorry, baby, he asked. You think I'm gorgeous, I said. You are, he said simply. The other day you called me fat, I said. Felix stiffened. From the silence, I could tell that Calix and Alex were uncomfortable too. And you took the last pancake. I literally ate nothing that day. I spent the whole day organizing stuff for you guys, I said. The memories flooded back. Shh, baby, I'm so sorry, whispered Felix, kissing my forehead. Don't touch me, I screamed. I jumped out of bed. The triplets all sat up. Felix, you fucker, what did you do? She wasn't scared before, yelled Alex. Yes, I was, I screamed so loudly that all the triplets jumped and their parents literally ran into the room. I burst into tears, sobbing uncontrollably. I was so confused. The triplets rushed to comfort me. No, bellowed their father, still powerful despite making them the new alphas. They sat back down. What is she doing in here? He asked quietly. His tone was dangerous. I can't sleep with her in that cleaning supplies room. I can't stand it, said Alex, taking responsibility. Then why did you not put her in a guest room? asked Romeo. Their mother was quiet, letting their father handle this. Um, said Alex. Look, Dad, everything was good, wasn't it, Chastity? asked Calix sweetly. It's my fault, said Felix, and he sounded truly broken. I've been pushing her a lot, and I'm sorry. She was literally so happy up until she came over to my side of the bed, which was five minutes ago. I felt sad for myself, but now the stupid mate bond was making me want to comfort Felix. Felix, we're okay, right? I asked softly, my inner wolf needing reassurance. Since when was I so weak? Always, baby. I fucking love you, Chastity, he said. His brothers looked shocked. My eyes widened. Did he mean that? It sounded so real. My inner wolf told me he did. I was not expecting Felix to fall the hardest and the fastest. He had been the meanest. Romeo ignored Felix's confession of love for me. Chastity is very young. She is 18. You boys are still young. You are 21. You have had numerous girlfriends in swift rotation, said Romeo. Major shade from their dad. As far as I know, Chastity cleans, cooks, and studies, and that's about it. You can't sneak your very inexperienced mate in here at night. There's three of you, and you all hated each other a day before yesterday. It's too much for her, said Romeo. Whoa. Did Romeo actually care about me? He definitely loved his boys. Maybe now that they had been faded to me, he had to salvage what remained of my well-being. We really didn't do any mating stuff, though, Calix said. Maybe in your eyes, honey, cooed Calix's mom. But in Chastity's eyes, it may seem different. The triplets were looking crestfallen, and I desperately wanted to comfort them. I was wholeheartedly regretting my scream. I wanted this awkward moment to be over. 
Let me start on breakfast. It's already late, I said, turning to leave. Felix rushed at werewolf speed, closed the door, and stood in front of it. I know I already fucked up this morning, but while I'm ahead, Felix shrugged. Over my dead body, princess. I stared at him. I am still one of the alphas of this pack, and whether you want to be with me or not, you will never lift a finger in this house again, said Felix, narrowing his eyes. Hire a maid and a cook again. Two each if it's too much for one person, Felix directed this at his parents. They looked annoyed, but Felix was an alpha. I agree, said Alex, nodding. Same, said Calix, winking at his mom so she would not get too mad. She ruffled Calix's hair and left with Felix, opening the door for her. Before today is over, sort out the bedroom situation and decide which guest bedroom will become Chastity's, said their father. He left. All the triplets were once again sitting on the bed with me standing nearby. Baby, I'm sorry for all the times I called you fat, said Felix. I was so shocked, I actually laughed. Alex rolled his eyes. What my idiot brother meant was, you're beautiful. I blushed. I realized Alex had never actually called me fat. I remembered him claiming to have always had a crush on me. I wondered if that were really true. Calix was the only one who had ever complimented me before the mate bond. He would be the easiest to forgive. I went over to Felix and put my arms around him and climbed into his lap. My wolf was screaming at me to do it. I decided to give in. Alex and Calix looked shocked. Felix nuzzled my nose with his. I realized Felix's wolf had been calling to mine. I realized something else. I've never seen any of your wolves, I said. The triplets grinned. They were wide awake now. Chapter 8. Running with Wolves The alpha triplets stood barefoot in the snow like it was no big deal. I turned away. I was not ready to see them. I caught a glimpse of Felix as though by accident, and even in the freezing cold, it was extremely thick and long. They were identical triplets, so I was worried for myself. They shifted much more quickly than I did. It took them barely ten seconds to break their bones and grow fur, becoming wolves before my very eyes. They were shiny black wolves reflecting their hair color. They were huge. I hid behind a nearby snow-covered tree. They gave me my privacy. Shifting was still painful for me. It took me about five minutes. I trotted out to show them my sandy wolf. They playfully circled me. I was half their size. We ran through the snow. I could tell them apart in wolf forms by their mannerisms. Felix bounded. He had heavy steps. He snarled and growled playfully a lot. Alex was often in the lead and had the most fluid movements. He slowed his pace to run beside me, watching over me carefully, protectively. Calix was extremely playful. He was the first to nip me. He tackled me gently and we rolled around in the snow. Then he ran circles around me, showing me how fast he could go. We must have spent hours playing as our wolves and we were adults. I wondered why we had never played together as children in our human forms. I ran behind my tree to shift back and dress myself. The boys shifted back and dressed, following me as I walked inside. We need to talk, I told them. They looked mortified. Get used to us having talks, I told them. They were alphas, but I was their future Luna if I decided to be with them. There were three of them and only one of me, so I had to learn to be firm with them. I wanted respect. We went to Felix's room, the only room I had not seen yet. He had artwork covering the walls, which was completely not what I was suspecting. Who drew all of these? I asked. I did, said Felix, grinning. Felix? A sensitive artist? What parallel universe had I entered? The drawings and paintings depicted wolves. I recognized the triplets in their wolf forms in many of the drawings. I noticed one with five wolves. The other two must be their parents. 
There were random sketches of items and portraits of family members and some of their school friends. Felix did not seem to have any artwork of Tonya or his other ex-girlfriends, which made me relieved. I spotted one picture of a girl. It was a painting. I gasped. It was me, sitting on the porch steps, looking out at the snow. All of his artwork was dated. The painting of me was from about a year ago. I looked at Felix, waiting for an explanation. I told you, he said simply. I think you're gorgeous. I blushed. You're giving me anxiety, Chastity. Let's have this talk. Come on, encouraged Calix. We sat on the bed. Felix and Calix were sitting so close to me. I felt really warm. Alex was sitting behind me. I was so lost in all of this, I momentarily forgot what I wanted to talk about. Talk, Chastity, said Alex in my ear. Right, um, so I have a question, I said. The triplets waited for me to ask it. Why did you hate me so much growing up? And please really think about it and give me a real answer, not something dumb like we were boys, we were stupid. Those aren't good reasons. I've always wondered why we could never be friends, I said, sighing. Is it just because I'm poor and burdensome in your parents' eyes? Was that it? The triplets kept silent. Were they trying to make me forget about the talk? In my case, said Felix, you frustrated me. Huh? I thought you were a cute little girl when I was a little boy. You came to us after a tragedy, and I didn't get that. You were sullen and cried all the time, and I was also just a little stupid at that age, said Felix. His brothers laughed. I liked teasing you, but it got out of hand, and the dynamic continued. I didn't know how to fix it. Also, you would be on my mind a lot, and I was angry that I couldn't get you out of my head. It makes sense now that I know you're my mate, but back then, I'd be annoyed every time I saw you. Sometimes, I'd be making out with whoever my girlfriend was at the time. I flinched and Felix kissed my fingertips, my wrist. And I'd be thinking about you, obsessively. Sometimes... Never mind, said Felix. No, tell me, I insisted, fascinated by his transparency. Sometimes I'd call a girl Charity by accident, he said, mentioning my nickname. Sorry for that nickname. That was rude. There's no shame in being poor. I can't believe I acted like that. Felix sighed. It's so close to my real name, it really stuck. Most pack members think Charity is my name, I said, smiling. Felix frowned. I'll fix that myself, and soon, said the Alpha. I wondered what he was going to do. I did not want to be reintroduced to the pack as their future Luna. I still needed time to make up my mind. Alex went next. I always thought you were cute too, but our parents hated your parents. They'd racked up so many debts. You'd always talk about how great your parents were and how mean mine were. I started to think you were ungrateful, but now I realize that if my parents were going to treat you like that, then... You might as well have gone to an orphanage. There's really no excuse, Chastity. I'm sorry, said Alex. Calix took a deep breath. I just went along with everything. Mom also said you were here to repay a debt, not to be a playmate. There were a lot of things I liked about you, and I should not have picked on you like that. That was totally wrong. I'm so sorry. I sighed. We had to talk about the incident. It was bothering me. Last night, I was a little afraid being in bed, I admitted. Because you're a virgin, said Felix. Baby, I know. No, not that. I kept thinking about when Calix insulted me and said my parents were dead and I broke his nose. Then you guys... I paused, shuddering. This was really hard to talk about. All the triplets stiffened, their faces pale. Then you each slapped me. Then you put me in the ice fishing hole until I went unconscious. I screamed for my life that day when you were dragging me to that hole. I really thought you were going to kill me. I could have died, I said, holding back tears. The triplets were silent. You don't ever have to forgive us, but 
just be ours anyway, said Calix. For what it's worth, we really weren't trying to drown you. We just wanted to scare you. But even before the mate bond, I would feel sick when I would think about that day. That was a heinous act, and I'll never forgive myself, said Felix. If you had drowned, we would have never found our mate and not known why. We would be searching for someone already lost to us. We would deserve that, but you, Chastity, after all you fought for, you deserve the best life imaginable. Please let us give you that life, said Alex. Please, Chastity. We're so sorry, said Calix. I sighed. I could get used to this. They were all looking at me with hungry eyes. Have you ever kissed anyone? asked Calix suddenly. No, I said blushing. The triplets exchanged glances. We want to kiss you, Felix said. I bit my lip nervously. I'm not sure if I'm ready yet, I said. That's okay, said Alex. My inner wolf was howling at me to kiss them. Were you guys disappointed when you realized I was your mate, I asked. No, of course not, said Alex. I went inside your room and laid on your bed, said Calix. I remembered Calix's scent on my bed and smiled. I went through your things, said Alex sheepishly. Sorry, it just hit me how little you actually had, so I wanted to see what you needed me to buy you. I nodded. Alex was the practical one. I freaked out because I thought you'd reject us because I knew we'd been horrible to you, mumbled Felix. He wasn't entirely wrong. I had considered leaving. I realized what was up when I came back from my first shift and smelled something amazing, and it was each of your rooms, I explained. The triplets grinned. So I went into Calix's room to investigate. I was too terrified to go into either of the other two rooms in case you guys got pissed. I was least afraid of Calix, I admitted. Calix smiled. Alex and Felix stiffened uncomfortably. Then I was not sure what to do. I tried to avoid you all for as long as possible while I worked out some of my feelings. I thought you guys would reject me, actually, I said. What? said Felix, laughing. His eyes widened. Never, said Alex. We've been waiting for our mate three years since we shifted, said Calix. So how come you always dated random girls, I asked. We're men. We have needs, said Felix simply. His brothers glared at him but did not say anything to the contrary. When I was setting up the party, I thought I'd have to watch you three slow dancing with your girlfriends while I served drinks, I said, chuckling sadly. Their jaws literally dropped. The triplets looked aghast. I giggled at their expressions. Felix's blue eyes darkened a little. I remembered how I had to be careful with my giggles around him and his wolf. He pulled me into him. Tingles shot through me. I want to take you on a date, baby, Felix said, his voice husky. Um, sure, I said weakly. Chapter 9 Date Night After a late burnt brunch made by the former Alpha and his Luna, I went around the house with Alex to choose my new room. I had cleaned all of these guest rooms and their adjacent bathrooms before. I knew exactly which room I wanted, but not because of the bedroom itself. It had a bathroom with a huge bathtub attached. I had always wanted to soak in that tub. Sometimes, I would lie in it and take a nap in the midst of cleaning. I was too afraid to try to use it in case someone realized and I got in trouble. The room was on the ground floor, though, and Alex was disappointed. I want you on our floor, he said, sighing. I want to bathe in that bathtub, I admitted. Alex laughed. He grumbled to himself. Sure, I guess it's temporary. Eventually, all four of us will sleep in the same room anyway. We can each keep our separate rooms to work in, Alex mused to himself. Alex seemed so certain that I would stay and become their Luna. I felt guilty. Maybe I had not been clear about how conflicted I was. Felix and Calix were off somewhere. 
Our date is at seven, Alex informed me with a small smile as he moved stuff to my new room. He did not want me carrying anything and got grumpy every time I tried, so I was lying on my new bed while he arranged my stuff according to my instructions. This was a departure from the norm. Me relaxing, the eldest alpha triplet working. You need to have respect for your alphas, Charity, Alex said using my awful nickname. The memory hit me out of nowhere. I sat up so quickly, panting a little. Alex dropped what he was doing and rushed to me. Chastity, what's wrong? He said, holding my shoulders and scrutinizing me. Just a memory, I mumbled without thinking. Alex winced. I felt his guilt as if it were my own. I felt his regret and shame, too. I had to get away from him to breathe a little bit. I had nothing to do now that my day was not filled with the upkeep of the huge pack house. I'm going for a walk, I said. He looked upset, but he did not try to stop me. I ran out the front door. The wind tossed my curls about, tangling them. It was freezing. The snow was crunchy and deep. It was dark already despite being early in the afternoon. There were not any other houses for miles. It was about a mile walk to the nearest bus stop, but no buses worked here on Sundays. I sighed. I wished I had a car, but I did not even have my license. I looked at the five cars parked in the driveway, one SUV for each triplet, one for the former Alpha and one for his Luna. I knew the triplets would get me a car and teach me to drive if I asked, but we had not discussed finances properly yet. What about all the money my parents owed their parents? I was no longer working off my debt, and the triplets had bought me so many expensive things for my birthday. It seemed like I was incurring more debt. I knew those were gifts, but what if I decided to leave in seven months? Would they turn on me and want their money back? I was so lost in my thoughts I walked right into Felix. He caught me. He was bundled up in his coat and boots. He was furious. I assumed it was towards me. He scooped me up and ran inside, slamming the door. Calix appeared. What the fuck was she doing out there like that, Alex? Bellowed Felix, stomping back into my new room with me in his arms to confront Alex. Felix threw me on the bed. I bounced a little. I yelped, not expecting that. Felix, what the fuck? yelled Alex, referring to how he had tossed me. Sorry, baby, said Felix, quickly running his hands all over me, looking for bruises. We both knew there were none. My inner wolf was purring. Felix was her favorite because he was the most in touch with his lupine side. Felix was definitely not my favorite. I scampered away from him, coming to my senses. What was she doing out there by herself, no coat, no boots, in the snow, snapped Felix, glaring at Alex. Alex folded his arms. I thought you were watching her, Felix added. I was not a child. I had been taking care of the family a few days ago. I had more responsibilities than them before they became alphas. She wanted to go for a walk, Alex said simply. And you let her go like that, Felix snarled. Alex sighed. Yeah, he said softly. She was thinking about some difficult memories and she was a little panicked. I could tell she needed to be away from me, from all of us for a little while, Alex added. I was surprised he had understood me so well. Calix sat on the bed and pulled me to him while his elder brothers talked. He breathed in my scent. He groaned. He started kissing my neck, licking and biting the skin without breaking it. I was trembling, but I was not scared of him. He focused on a spot. I knew he was giving me a hickey on purpose. Tomorrow I had school where there were a lot of unmated males. Females who had found their mates but were not marked properly yet usually had hickeys. It was an unspoken thing, a don't-touch sign. I had never seen hickeys on any of the triplets' ex-girlfriends. Alex and Felix stopped their argument, noticing what Calix was doing. The other two alphas climbed the bed, their eyes lustful and hungry. I shivered. Calix handed me to Alex, who started peppering my neck with kisses until he found a spot he liked. He sucked on it, relishing the way my skin tasted. 
Calix was taking my shoes and socks off. The youngest Alpha started massaging my feet, soothing me. He could tell I was anxious. Alex gently gave me to Felix, who immediately latched onto my neck. Felix's hands roamed my body. I tried not to get excited, but my inner wolf was going crazy, and Felix could tell. He released me, though, panting. I quickly jumped off the bed, hyper aware that they were looking at the three fresh hickeys on my neck with great satisfaction. They got up to leave. Don't forget date night, Calix reminded me cheerfully on the way out. I realized I had been holding my breath and exhaled as the door closed. I was excited to soak in the huge tub. I sat in the water thinking. I had always wanted to bathe in this luxurious tub as though the elegance of it would solve all my problems. Now I had the tub and a whole host of other problems. Money would no longer be an issue for me as long as I remained in the triplet's good graces. I knew I could hold them at bay for a while, but I had a feeling they planned to mark and mate me before my last seven months of high school were up as collateral, so I would not be able to easily leave. Once properly marked, they would be connected to me and able to find my location through the connection. It was a protective thing between mates. Also, with three alphas, the chances of me conceiving were astronomical, and I knew myself well enough to know I could not bear to leave them if I was pregnant for one of them. I had been robbed of my parents, and no child deserved that. I sighed. My head hurt. After my long bath, I sat on my new bed in a robe and tentatively put on the television. I had not watched television in years outside of random movies every now and then during school. I felt like I should ask someone's permission to watch it. In the past, I had not been allowed to increase the electricity bill because my parents owed the former Alpha and his Luna so much money. I found a show about a teenage witch. I was getting really engrossed in it when I noticed it was already six o'clock. I wore a baby blue sweater and matching mini pleated skirt over black stockings. The outfit was from my Mina and my Tina makeover. I put on the baby blue winter coat and boots from the triplets. I met them downstairs. They all looked so handsome. My heart raced and my skin flushed. Felix insisted on carrying me to the car, saying the snow was deep. I rolled my eyes. I had shoveled that snow myself before. Felix was in the back seat with me. Alex was driving us in his car. Calix was in the passenger seat. He kept looking back at me to check on me as well as shooting warning looks at Felix. Felix smirked at his younger brother and raised his hands to show they were not all over me, but they resumed roaming my body as soon as Calix turned frontwards again. I honestly did not mind. It was an amusing game. The triplets took me to a restaurant that the family frequented, apparently. I had never been there before. The staff all seemed to know the brothers well and regarded me with curiosity. They were the Pax Alphas, so I should get used to all the attention. The restaurant was called Winter Moon Snack, after our Winter Moon Pack. I thought it was clever, but I also didn't get out much. I sat in a booth between Calix and Felix, and Alex begrudgingly sat facing us. My stomach rumbled. I was used to not eating for prolonged periods of time, but the triplets were anxious to get some food in me. A blonde pale waitress in her 40s approached us in her white uniform. I looked at the menu. Do you want me to order for you, baby? purred Felix in my ear. No, I said stiffly. My wolf promptly made me feel guilty for the hurt in his eyes at my tone. No, thank you, baby, I said hesitantly. Felix's face lit up like a Christmas tree. He, he began massaging my shoulders while I looked through the menu, describing everything he had already tried to me, which was everything on the menu. The waitress whose name tag said Martha was glaring at me. The envy in her eyes blatant. I knew a lot of girls in the pack fantasized about being the triplet's mate. They were handsome and rich and alphas, and there were three of them. When word spread that I was theirs, I would have a lot of animosity to deal with. However, 
I was used to my life being shitty, so who cared if it was differently shitty? The triplets did not seem to notice her dislike of me. Hey, boys, she said. My new alphas. Hey, Martha, said Felix, grinning. Hey, said Calix. Speaking of alphas, meet your new Luna, said Alex, nodding towards me. Martha's suspicions were confirmed. She looked crestfallen, but immediately recovered. I had never been more uncomfortable. Luna Charity, I've heard of you, Martha said, smiling. It's chastity, and make sure everyone here knows that. That's an order, okay, said Felix, tensely. Martha nodded fervently. What does Luna Chastity want to drink? A cookies and cream milkshake, please, I said. In this cold weather, Martha said. The triplets laughed. How about a hot chocolate, asked Felix. No, I said, truly angry this time. The triplets stopped laughing and placed their orders. We ordered food one time. As soon as Martha was out of earshot, I could not help myself. Stop bossing me around, Felix. How is now any different from before with you telling me what to do? I snapped. Alex and Calix glared at Felix. The mate bond was so powerful, it actually trumped their bond as identical triplet alphas, considering they could easily be made to fight due to me. I felt powerful for once, and then I felt gross. Okay, I said softly to a hurt-looking Felix. Okay, baby, he said. My inner wolf wanted to kiss him. I would not let her have his lips, so I kissed his cheek. He grinned. Then I kissed his jaw and his neck. He growled a little. What had come over me? Calix nudged me. I started to suck on Calix's neck, leaving my own hickey. That caused a lot of commotion because then Felix and Alex demanded one each. I latched onto Felix's neck. He groaned at my enthusiasm. Alex waited impatiently across from us. I climbed over Felix instead of asking to be excused and got into Alex's side of the booth. He grinned, anticipating the interaction. Martha came over with our drinks. Three hot chocolates and my milkshake. Food's coming right up, boys, she said. She had probably known them for years. There were so many parts of their lives I was not privy to. Alex tugged on my sleeve. I planted open mouth kisses on his neck, enjoying the taste of his skin until I found a spot I wanted. I sucked on it. His hands were under my skirt, squeezing my thighs, which was very unlike Alex. I broke away from him and looked at my handiwork, satisfied. My wolf was satiated for now. My milkshake was delicious, but it did make me feel cold. Alex hugged me to him. The food was incredible. The triplets had rare burgers, but I did not like rare meat despite being a werewolf, so I ate chicken cordon bleu, which I was shocked to find on the menu. I had seen it on a cooking show when I was little. It was delicious. The triplets refused to leave until I at least took one bite of a dessert, so I ate a bit of a warm Nutella brownie with vanilla ice cream on top. It was good, so I stuffed myself with a few more bites. It was the first time I had been this full in years. I felt sleepy instantly. I must have actually fell asleep on Alex's shoulder. When I woke up, Alex was carrying me to my room with Felix and Calix on his heels. I pretended to fall back asleep so they would leave, but they tucked me in, taking off my coat and boots and sitting on the edge of my bed talking softly. I peeked at the time. I had a clock and a side table now. It was 10 o'clock. I had school. I felt overstimulated by them and annoyed for some reason. My hormones were really making me crazy. I was usually not allowed to have mood swings anyway as a servant, so maybe this was all that pent-up emotion. I have school tomorrow, guys, I said, startling them. I really want to sleep here, whined Calix, fixing his baby blue eyes on me. No, Calix, come on, said Alex firmly. Good night, Chastity, Alex said softly, coming over to kiss my forehead and cheeks. Calix kissed the tip of my nose and looked at me with sad eyes. Good night, he said, pouting. Felix stroked my hair absentmindedly. I'll leave my door unlocked if you need me for anything, he said. 
Never in a million years, I thought. But my inner wolf heard that, and she was already flashing me pornographic images of what I would need Felix for. I started to blush, and Felix saw it, smirking. You're such a mean mate, he said to me. What? Me? You won't let me kiss your lips, the alpha explained. I shook my head no. He chuckled and sighed. He kissed the corners of my mouth slowly and carefully, lingering at each corner, as close as he could get to my lips without touching them. Don't you want to wear your pajamas, he said. I can dress myself, I insisted, but he began pulling my stockings off and my inner wolf practically tackled me mentally. I literally could not speak as the triplet slowly undressed me. I could not believe this was happening. I had refused them a kiss one second and was undressed the next. I was in my underwear hugging myself to cover my breasts as Calix had just took off my bra. Felix was massaging my legs and my underwear was literally soaked from all the stimulation. I knew he could smell it. They all could. They were trying to entice me, to make me break and ask to be mated and marked. Alex found a nightgown in my drawer. Raise your arms so I can put it on you, he said, feigning innocence. The other two grinned. If I raised my arms, they would see my breasts. I got up, still hugging myself, and approached Alex. He seemed taken aback. Felix and Calix were behind me now, so they could not see. Close your eyes, I commanded. Alphas could not be commanded, but Alex wanted to please me. He obliged and closed his eyes. I quickly slipped the nightgown over me. I could hear disappointed noises from Calix and Felix behind me. You can open them now, I said to Alex. He opened his eyes. His eyes trailed over my form. He smiled slyly and left. Felix and Calix followed him. I shut the door, locking it, in case Felix and his wolf came to check on me. I got into bed. I expected to fall asleep easily in this comfy bed, but I tossed and turned all night missing the intense body heat and tight grip of the triplets. Ugh. They tormented me even with their absence. Chapter 10 School? I woke up at the crack of dawn. Old habits die hard. With no Alex to pull me back into bed, I went downstairs. I did not know what to do. I wanted to eat breakfast, but I was not allowed to make it. I had more than enough respect for Felix. He was the last triplet I would disobey, and he had forbidden me from cooking and cleaning, but the new maids and cooks had not been hired yet. My wolf knew what to do, and as always, she had a crazy idea. Felix really had left his door unlocked for me like he'd said. He looked so sweet and innocent asleep. Every feature was perfectly carved. I took a deep breath. Things were different now. There was no need to fear him. He had explicitly said I could wake him if I needed anything. Felix, I whispered. My wolf snarled at me. She wanted me to climb into bed with Felix. She said our scent would wake him. I got closer. I sat right next to him. He scrunched up his face a little. I leant down towards him. A curl brushed his face. That did the trick. I was pulled under the covers without warning. Felix enveloped me in his arms, nuzzling into my neck. He planted kisses on my neck and found the hickey that was his. He started deepening it. I moaned. I knew you would come, he murmured. He had not been wrong. Was he talking to me or my wolf? My wolf was ecstatic. Felix, I don't know what to do, I said sadly, pouting for full effect. Felix kissed my cheeks. What's the matter, baby? I'll fix it. I'm hungry, but you banned me from cooking, and the new cook isn't hired yet, I said softly. It sounded ridiculous now. I half expected him to scoff at me and say he had not meant I could never cook and to get out of his bed and stop bothering him. None of those things happened. Felix scooped me up and groggily walked downstairs carrying me. He put me on a chair near the kitchen counter and went to the fridge. What do you want to eat, baby? I can make you pancakes and then I'll drive you to school, he suggested, rubbing his eyes. I was shocked. 
Felix? Nurturing? Pancakes are good, I said softly. He owed me one, actually. He started on the batter. I wonder if I should wake up Calix and Alex, he said more to himself but looking at me. They might be pissed at me, keeping you to myself. Hmm, but you came to me. You're a big girl. You know what you want, he said, grinning. I tried to stop loving his dimples so much, but my heart fluttered. We ate together. The food actually tasted good. Felix had made chocolate chip pancakes and bacon and eggs. I got ready for school. It felt weird having a regular backpack and a proper coat and boots on. Where do you think you're going? asked Felix. He had showered and dressed in a black t-shirt and black jeans. His hair was still damp. He looked so handsome. I snapped out of it. What was wrong with me? I fixed him with a determined stare. I usually walk to the bus stop, I said. I said I was driving you after breakfast, didn't you hear me? He said, grabbing his keys. I did hear him. He swung me over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes before I could protest. I squealed. Felix put me in the passenger seat and buckled me in. He drove me to school in silence. He was smirking and I was fuming. A lot of teenagers recognized one of the alphas driving me to school. A couple girls screamed. I rolled my eyes. Felix would not open the door on my side. Almost two dozen students were staring. I looked at him pointedly. Thank you, I tried. He pointed to his cheek. Where's my kiss? I blushed. He turned the engine off and sat back, scrolling through his iPhone to let me know he had all day. The number of students steadily increased. I launched at him and swiftly kissed his cheek. I barely felt that, he teased. I glared at him. Felix was the same, teasing and taunting me, but now he craved me, so the nature of his antics were different. Softer. He wanted to take pleasure for himself, but he also yearned to give it. I kissed his cheek softly. I'm gonna miss you, baby, murmured Felix. What time to come get you? Four, I said, actually looking forward to being picked up by him. He opened the door for me and watched me walk into the school while students gawked at me. Mina and Tina were at their lockers. They screamed when they saw me, noticing the three hickeys on my neck despite my attempts to cover it with makeup. Oh my God, said Mina, pausing between each word. I'm surprised you can walk, said Tina. Both girls screamed again. I blushed furiously. You're so lucky. You get the triplets and you get to be Luna, whined Mina. Tina nodded fervently. Okay, so who was the best in bed, asked Mina. I didn't sleep with them, I said indignantly. I did, but it was real sleep. What are you waiting for? Haven't you known them for years, asked Tina. I realized I had never told a single soul about how awfully the former Alpha's family treated me and how the triplets bullied me. I did not feel like talking about it now. She's playing hard to get, obviously, to enhance their feelings. Boss move, said Mina, nodding. Tina grinned. I giggled. The whole day was like something from someone else's life. Everyone was nice and respectful towards me. Suddenly, people knew my name was Chastity, not Charity. Ashton gave me my hair tie back and apologized. I had forgot he had taken one. I thought of Alex keeping my other hair tie. I stared at Ashton, who was fidgeting nervously. Did he have a crush on me? He definitely did not want any trouble with three alphas. He was probably afraid I would tell them he had my hair tie, but I was not petty like that even if I had remembered. I put my hair up in a high ponytail so I would not lose the hair tie. I was wearing a pleated black skirt over black stockings and a pink sweater. Guys looked at me, eyeing the hickeys on my neck like I was suddenly desirable because I had been spoken for. I was relieved at four o'clock to scamper out of school. I was tired of all those eyes on me after years of being invisible. The only one who treated me the same was Mr. Johnson. He stopped me on my way out. Everything okay, Chastity? He said in a low voice. I smiled and nodded. Mr. Johnson was big enough to be an alpha. You're really young and you're a bright girl. I know you live with your mates, but don't let them rush you, okay? He said, looking at my neck. 
I was mortified. I won't, Mr. Johnson, I promise. I'll walk you out, he insisted. He walked me to Felix's car. Felix smiled when he saw us. Hey, squirt, said Felix, like I was his little bratty sister or something, and he usually picked me up. Calix and Alex were in the back seat. Hey, coach, the triplets chorused. Hey, my star players are my alphas now, boomed Mr. Johnson proudly. Be very careful and gentle and patient with this girl, he said sternly. My face burned. My cheeks were so flushed. The triplets nodded. Don't think I can't still whip you into shape, joked Mr. Johnson. Bye, coach, the triplets said. I got in the passenger seat and Felix started to drive. I didn't know coach liked you, Calix said. Yeah, he's also the math group's coach too, I said. The triplets laughed. What's so funny, I asked. I just can't picture coach like that, mumbled Calix. Alex was directly behind me. He sniffed my hair and stiffened. That's not the hair tie I gave back to you. It smells like another male, he said angrily. Felix stepped on the brakes and the car screeched to a halt. I squealed. You scared me, I protested. Sorry, baby, said Felix quickly. Who touched you? He asked, staring at me from the driver's seat. No one, I whined. Then why does your hair smell like a different guy? Tell us the truth, Chastity, said Calix. I was livid. They had had six girlfriends each year for the past five years. Why? What are you going to do to me? I yelled. Nothing, baby, grumbled Felix, who started driving again. We'll just have a talk with the guy. Tell him to watch his hands if he wants to keep them. You're ours, said Alex sullenly. I sighed. A boy who stole my hair tie before my birthday gave it back today because he didn't want any trouble, I said. Smart boy, commented Calix. Alex relaxed. He took the hair tie off and rubbed it in his palms, annoyed with its smell. He put it in his pocket. He started massaging my scalp. I was seething, but it felt amazing. Felix was driving one-handed, so he put his other hand up my skirt between my thighs. I gasped. The alphas started rubbing me. Thank goodness I was wearing underwear and stockings, but even through two layers, I could feel his caresses. My core started to get wet. Calix smelled it and started massaging my shoulders. The triplets would be the death of me. It was only a 15-minute drive to get home, but that was a long time with five hands on me. I was thankful Felix had to keep his other hand on the wheel. He was the most devious. He definitely made his one free hand count with what he was doing to me between my legs. I started to moan. He parked the car. We were home. Let's take her to my room, said Felix. I have homework, I insisted. They looked annoyed. I'll do it for you, said Alex. I knew all the triplets had been straight-A students, but so was I, and sometimes I got a hundred if it was maths. I wanted to do my own work. School was so important. I was always grateful that being poor did not rob me of my education. I want to do it. It won't take long, I told them. I took my sweet time with my homework. I usually finished it in less than an hour, but I purposefully did it slowly and then took a long bath. I put on some new pajamas that the Luna had gotten me. She was still technically acting as Luna because the triplets had not marked and mated me. This was the first time she had ever gotten me anything. She told me to think of it as a late birthday present. They were soft as butter. She got them in a ton of different colors. I put on the dusky pink ones and went upstairs because my wolf was giving me a headache. She wanted her mates. I found them in Alex's room, which made me remember how we had slept in there together. I blushed, thinking about it. They were going over some alpha thing with a map of their territory lines. I did not even know who was their beta or gamma. I should find out those things. They put their work away, though, when they saw me. Felix pulled me into his lap on the bed. You had her all morning, protested Calix. That's because she came to me and woke me up. She wanted her Felix, said Felix, matter-of-factly. I blushed. Do you have a favorite? asked Calix. Calix, that's childish. Don't ask her that, 
she's all of ours. Don't make it weird, Alex said. You're scared it's me, said Calix smugly. Alex and Felix rolled their eyes. I love how sweet Calix is, I said. Calix beamed. I love how tough Felix is, I said. Felix replied, you're my weakness, though, baby. And I love how responsible Alex is, I said. Alex smiled. We love everything about you. Now let's fuck, said Felix quickly, catching me off guard. I realized he was joking. I rolled my eyes and his brothers laughed. They weren't completely joking because after that, the mood changed. When will you let us kiss you, said Alex softly. It was not the kissing I was afraid of. It was how heated things tended to get. If I gave them an inch, they took a mile. I'm afraid if we kiss, things will escalate, I said. That's the general idea, murmured Felix. No, said Alex sharply. A kiss is just a kiss. I thought about it. My wolf was fighting me to take control. I had not slept that well without them last night. Will your parents be furious if I sleep with you guys tonight? It's easier to fall asleep next to all of you, I said softly. We're the alphas. You're our mate. They can't stop us. They just don't advise it, that's all, said Alex. That night, I was between Felix and Calix. Felix had promised to be on his best behavior. Alex was on the other side of Calix by the free edge of the bed. Felix was between me and the wall. He had been spooning me for a few minutes when he slipped his hands down my underwear. My eyes snapped open. My inner wolf was howling in delight and did not want me to stop him. I was young and hormonal and curious about sex. I wanted to see what he would do. He stroked the folds of my pussy, gently parting them and searching for my clit. I knew that was where all the nerve endings were. He found it, the little tender area. He caressed it in a circular motion. It felt heavenly and I stifled my moans. I knew Alex and Calix would either chastise him or join in and I was afraid of both him stopping and him getting reinforcements. Calix stirred, smelling my arousal. He put his hand in my underwear too, but he squeezed my butt cheeks instead. I could no longer hold back my moans. Alex saw what they were doing to me. I thought he would make them stop, but he added a third hand to my already crowded underwear. He found my entrance and put one and then two fingers in me, pumping me. I whimpered. The triplets worked me into a frenzy. I was about to come, but then... I woke up between Felix and Calix with Alex on the end. I had dreamt that. They really were behaving. I was a little... disappointed. Chapter 11. Christmas Cometh I continued to avoid the topic of kissing the triplets, and they were being exemplary in their patience. They had begun to insist I tell them exactly what I wanted for Christmas. All holidays were a sore spot for me. I had missed out on years of gifts and love. I usually had to work extra hard during Christmas time to decorate the house to the Luna's standards and to help prepare Christmas dinner. I remembered watching the triplets open the most extravagant gifts year after year, while the Alpha and Luna looked on proudly, their arms around each other and cups of eggnog in their hand. I was not given anything. This year would be an entirely new experience. The new cooks and maids had been hired, two of each, all women in their 40s or 50s and all fascinated by the handsome triplets. The new maids, Patty and Fanny, constantly reminded me of how lucky I was to have such wonderful mates. The triplets beamed whenever they heard this. Yvette and Marlene, the new cooks, agreed with these sentiments and thought it a travesty that I did not care for the triplets by doing the cooking and cleaning. I was furious. I had done that for nine years without so much as a thank you. Before I could give the cooks a piece of my mind, Felix chimed in. I have forbidden my bride from cooking and cleaning, ladies, Felix said warmly. 
The cook smiled. His bride? She is preparing for her future as my trophy wife, Felix added, grinning. I rolled my eyes. December had finally come and I was on winter break. The pack house had been decorated in silver, white, and icy blue. There were wreaths and garlands hung everywhere. There was a huge Christmas tree that the triplets had decorated themselves. The tree ornaments were also cute. Gingerbread men, elves, Santa, Mrs. Claus, reindeer, snowmen, and even a yeti. I had never noticed how beautiful everything looked. Twinkling lights were strung up everywhere. We were having breakfast one morning when I decided to discuss an important topic. How much money do I still owe you guys exactly, Alpha Romeo and Luna Ronnie? I did not feel comfortable addressing them any other way, though the triplets were now the alphas. The triplets stiffened. Romeo and Ronnie looked surprised. The cooks and maids were eavesdropping nearby. Nothing, barked Alex, glaring at his parents. You owe them zero dollars and zero cents. No, you still owe a lot, said Felix, surprising me. But I'm the alpha now, and I accept kisses as payment. I rolled my eyes, and Calix laughed. I really want to know, please, I said. Romeo sighed. Ronnie looked at me. Your parents owed us about a quarter of a million dollars, she said. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, okay? And how much have I worked off? I asked. We would have paid you about five hundred dollars a week, said the Luna. So that's five hundred times fifty-two weeks a year for nine years, because I never took my vacation or sick days, I said, laughing awkwardly at my own silly joke. The triplets were not laughing. That's 234000 I said. Wow, I had almost paid them off. The Luna smiled. To pay off the remaining 16000 I'd have to work 32 more weeks, I said. That's about eight months if I kept working. I'd be almost totally done when high school is over. I'd just have one more month to go, I explained. Great math, baby, said Felix. But you won't be working anymore. I've already told you this. Please, don't defy me. I sulked. I was happy to be free of working, but what if I wanted to leave after high school and they suddenly wanted their money? I was not working under the assumption that I would marry the triplets and therefore be family, so all debts were forgiven. What if I left after high school and went my own way? Would you still feel the same about me not working? I asked hesitantly. The Luna was looking at her sons in a I told you so sort of way. Yes, I would, said Felix, shocking me. You're done working here. You're not obligated to be with us, but your housekeeping days are over. I told you that already, and I don't like repeating myself. I'm only humoring this conversation because you're my mate. You can ask my brothers how I act with pack members who defy me. You think you've seen the worst of me, but I've went soft on you your whole life. Trust me. Felix was even gruffer with pack members who defied him. What did he do? Kill them? Breakfast continued awkwardly. I got up without asking to be excused and just stormed out of the house, still in my pajamas. I heard Felix roar and I knew he was coming after me. I was crunching through the snow when I was lifted suddenly. Felix swung me over his shoulder and carried me to his room. He tossed me on the bed. I hate you, I screamed. I love you, he said softly. We stared at each other for a few moments. I got up and went to him. He embraced me warmly. I sighed. You don't owe us anything, murmured Felix. Not money and not even love. I was crying in his arms, but my tears of frustration turned to tears of relief. You should have never been made to work for us. Who asks a little girl to work off her parents' debts? It never made any sense. It was wrong. And I'm ashamed of it. I'm struggling, Chastity. I've always thought of my parents as good people, but they wronged you. That's not the kind of Alpha and Luna I want us to be. I hope you'll stay, baby. I need you. The pack needs you, Felix said. I felt something damp on my shoulder. Felix was crying. 
I kissed his tear-streaked cheeks, and then I pressed my lips against his. He lifted me up, and I wrapped my legs around his waist. He kissed me with reckless abandon. We could taste each other's tears as they continued to fall. I was soaring, and though my wolf was elated, I did not do it for her. I kissed him for me. I was out of breath when I pulled away. Felix pressed his forehead to mine. Our noses brushed. Felix was panting. Stay, he whispered. I could not say yes yet, but I knew I was in deep. I just held him. That night, the pack house hosted a Christmas party to which everyone was invited. I wore a red velvet dress Alex had gotten me. It was so pretty. I slow danced with Calix. I had never been asked to dance before. We had not danced on our birthday with all the commotion. I felt beautiful being held and twirled by Calix under the twinkling lights. He walked me out to the porch after and pointed up. I knew what was up there before I even looked. Mistletoe. I smirked at him. He smiled at me, raising his brows. I nodded. Calix pressed his lips to mine. His movements were slow and gentle. His lips felt soft and warm. He cupped my face in his hands. I had my hands on his shoulders. Warmth coursed through me despite the freezing winds and falling snow surrounding the porch. We broke apart. Calix was grinning from ear to ear, and so was I. I noticed Alex was missing from the party, so I went to look for him. He was not in his room. I found him in my old room, sitting on my old cot. It was such a surreal sight. I crept in, shutting the door. He looked at me sadly. You don't know how sorry I am, he said softly, but I did because my wolf was whimpering in response to the depth of his remorse. These guys were going to make it impossible for me to say goodbye to them. I remembered my parents leaving me, dropping me off at the pack house. My heart shattered that day. Is that how the triplets would feel if I left them? Alex pulled me to him and buried his head in my torso. I hugged him. He pulled me onto the cot. It was so cramped. He was too huge to fit on it. I laughed. I love hearing you laugh, Alex said. I was quiet, my head resting on his chest. Look at me, Alex said. It was not a command, but I obeyed. Alex's lips came crashing down onto mine. I was not expecting this kind of urgency from him. His hands roamed my body. I moaned into his mouth, and he slipped his tongue in mine. He caressed my tongue with his. Goosebumps sprang up all over me. He tilted my head back so he could get better access to my mouth. He sat up, never breaking the kiss with me, straddling his lap. He rocked me back and forth on his lap. I could feel how hard he was, and my core moistened in anticipation of him. I broke the kiss, panting, and swiftly gave him another peck when I saw him frown. He smiled. Stay smiling like that, I told him. That's in order, I said laughing. Since my first kiss with each of them, I had been keeping my distance a little out of sheer shyness. Now I was enjoying their body heat. Do I get a good night kiss? whispered Felix in my ear. I turned around to face him. The alpha kissed me, relishing the moment, wrapping his arms around me tightly. He nipped my lower lip, making me gasp and granting his tongue access to my mouth. I moaned as he climbed on top of me and settled himself between my legs, grinding against me all the while never breaking the kiss. His hands rubbed my sides squeezing my waist and finally tangled in my hair, lifting my head closer to his. I pulled away, breathless, and Felix grinned. You were very much worth the wait, baby, he whispered, still on top of me, nose to nose. I smiled. I had found out they were my mates on our birthday on November 11th, but I had not kissed them properly until late December. I started to feel sleepy. Felix spooned me. I felt so warm and comfortable. He was whispering to me as I drifted off to sleep.
telling me I was beautiful, that he loved me, that his brothers loved me, that he could not wait for me to bear his mark and his heir. I did not hear the rest. Sleep embraced me. I woke up to find that the triplets were already awake, but lying in bed talking, waiting for me to wake up. You guys never wake up early, I said sleepily. Except on Christmas Day, sleeping beauty, said Calix. Alex kissed me, his lips moving gently against mine. He sucked on my bottom lip and nibbled it. It felt so good. He pulled away and smirked at me. Before I could move in for another kiss, Calix hopped over and pressed his lips to mine with an urgency I was not expecting, lighting a fire in my lower belly. I was breathless when he was done. Felix pulled me to him, kissing me eagerly and tangling his hands in my hair. While we kissed, I felt Alex's mouth on my neck, planting hot open mouth kisses down to my shoulder. He nipped my shoulder, making me squeal, which granted Felix's tongue entry to my mouth. Calix and Alex's hands were now both roaming my body, squeezing my most tender areas. Felix broke the kiss and pushed me down flat onto my back in the middle of the bed. Three pairs of hands were now caressing me. My wolf thought it was a Merry Christmas indeed. The triplets did not undress me. They knew I was not ready for that, but they massaged every part of me they could reach. Felix was kneading my breasts while Alex was squeezing my thighs and my butt, and Calix rubbed my sides and my core through the thin fabric of my pajamas. My underwear was soaked in no time. I was panting. Merry Christmas, baby, said Felix huskily, reaching down nibbling my lower lip. Merry Christmas, Chastity, said Calix as he licked and nipped at my ear. Merry Christmas, Luna, said Alex, raising my top and planting kisses on my tummy. I giggled but quickly stopped in case it made their wolves go crazy. They were looking at me hungrily. I quickly extricated myself from them before things got out of hand. They followed me to the living room. Their parents were already up, holding their mugs and cuddling together. I was immediately transported back to Christmases of the past and how horrible and alone I had felt, while the family showered each other with love and I cooked and cleaned. No one used to even say Merry Christmas to me, let alone gift me anything. My first Christmas with them at age nine, when I had not known any better, I had made gifts for the triplets in arts and crafts at school. Little paper dolls. The triplets had cast them into the fireplace. I stopped in my tracks. The fireplace was ablaze. Felix immediately pulled me to him, sensing I was tense. Mm, baby, talk to me, he said, tightening his arms around me. Chastity! called Alex, gripping my chin and trying to make me look at him. Look at me when I'm talking to you, demanded a 16-year-old Alex on Christmas morning. I had overslept, crying myself to sleep, dreading another awful Christmas where I felt unwanted. I missed my parents. They had been junkies, but they had always tried to surprise me with things. They had been like children themselves, and the three of us would have fun and laugh when they were not too high to notice me. Are you even listening to us? asked Felix, grabbing my hand. I had not made breakfast yet, and the triplets were already done opening their gifts. What's the point of you being here if you're not going to work off your debts? asked the Luna. It's almost noon and no breakfast. She rolled her eyes and went to the kitchen to make it herself. Felix pulled me by my hand out into the snow. I remembered when they had dipped me in the ice water. I started to scream and struggle against him, fearing a repeat of that. Ugh, I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just putting you out of the house. If you're not going to earn your keep, then maybe you'd rather be out here, snarled Felix. Felix released my hand and went back inside, shutting the door on a 13-year-old me. I hugged myself, shivering in the biting cold. Alex glanced at me from a window, then shut the window. I thought I would be out there forever. I'm not sure how long had passed, but I was leaning against the house in a nook, trying to stay warm. If I were human, I would have been hyperthermic by now. There you are. I flinched and looked up. It was Calix. Look, 
Hurry up. My brothers are napping after lunch. Go to your room and lock the door, said the youngest triplet. Calix led me inside, tiptoeing. He waved his hands in the air. I made a run for my room and was relieved to hide there for the rest of the day. Calix waved his hands in the air, snapping me out of my flashback. I launched myself at him like he was a raft in the middle of a treacherous sea. I clung to him and burst into tears, sobbing bitterly. Baby, baby, talk to me, pleaded Felix, rubbing my back. Little Luna, don't cry, I can't take it, said Alex softly, running his hands through my hair. No, I whimpered, shrinking against Calix. Calix lifted me into his arms and kissed my forehead. It's okay, Chastity. No one is going to hurt you. Ever, okay? I'm sorry. I'm here. Don't worry, Calix whispered. Why is she mad at us all of a sudden, Felix said. My wolf whimpered at the pain in his voice. She wanted Felix. She always wanted Felix. I shuddered, trying to make her understand. What did we do? Everything was fine, Alex asked, sounding broken. My wolf whined, wanting to go to him, too. Did we rush you too much just now? You seemed into it. We're sorry, said Felix. It's not that. Calix was there just now, too, but she wants him, Alex said softly. Calix, take me to my room, I pleaded. Calix did as I asked. His elder brothers tried to follow. Just Calix, I whimpered. They stopped in their tracks. I looked at their heartbroken faces over Calix's shoulder. I had ruined what was supposed to be my first truly merry Christmas in years. Calix locked my door and we snuggled together in my bed. I had meant my tiny old room when I said take me to my room, but that was my old life. Calix would not carry me to the old makeshift room. I needed him so badly all of a sudden. I straddled him. He raised his eyebrows. Maybe I could separate him from the other two. He was the easiest to forgive, and my heart and mind were too fragile right now. My wolf was furious at the thought of trying to just have one of the three. She was determined to have all of her mates. She did not feel complete without them. I pushed her to the back of my mind. I moved my hips, rubbing myself against Calix. He groaned. He seemed reluctant, but he immediately got hard. Oh, God, Chastity, he murmured. Fuck. I smiled. He gripped my hips eagerly and sat up with me on his lap and straddling him. He thrusted against me, although we were still clothed. He kissed me deeply, moaning against my lips. He broke away. Tell me what's going through your head, please. Why are you mad at Felix and Alex? Do you just want us one at a time? He suggested. No. What if I just want only one? I said. Huh? He said. What if I only want you and we forget about your brothers? I asked, instantly remorseful. I could not believe I just said that out loud. Calix looked conflicted. You're my mate, Chastity. My Luna. I was built to do anything for you once the mate bond hit that day you came of age. I would do whatever you asked of me, and so would Alex and Felix. I don't have it in me to deny you, but that would break my brothers. We're linked. We're like one alpha in three different bodies. We're identical triplets, Chastity, he said, his eyes pleading with me. We can have more alone time, as much as you need, he offered. Please don't shut out my brothers forever, he said. That's a request, not an order. I can't order you. You're my equal. I pulled away from him. He would let me have my time with him, but he would keep making a case for his brothers. Just go, Calix. Never mind, I said. Please, please tell me what you're thinking, he said. You thinking about the times I hid you, he said. I looked at him. Yeah, the time on Christmas when I was 13 and you guys were 16. Felix put me out in the snow for oversleeping and not making breakfast. Alex was angry too. He agreed with the punishment. Calix sighed. His eyes went dark and I knew it was not lust. He was mind-linking his brothers. Ugh. There was a knock on the door. Baby, 
You can put on a dominatrix outfit and spank the shit out of me. Just don't ignore me, called Felix from the other side of the door. I smirked initially, and my wolf wagged her tail, but I quickly frowned. Chastity, I'm sorry. I love you. I'm in love with you, and I've never felt that way about any girl. I've had, like, 30 girlfriends, which is something I completely regret. Every couple of weeks, I cast them aside like it was nothing. Maybe this is my karma. I've never even given that a second thought, but every night I think about you. Every single day you spent here. Every time you cried. Everything that was denied you and my heart breaks all over again. You break my heart every night, Chastity, and you mend it every morning. It beats only for you. I live for you. Please, let's talk, said Alex, sounding close to tears. I gasped. It was the first time Alex had said he loved me. Felix had been saying it since the day after my birthday. I opened the door. Alex literally got down on his knees. Felix did too. How do you want to do this, baby? With a whip and a gag or freestyle, Felix said. I rolled my eyes. I embraced Alex to Felix's jargon. The eldest alpha stood up and lifted me easily. I wrapped my legs around him, my hands on his face. He crashed his lips to mine, kissing me like he had not seen me in years. He left me breathless. Felix snatched me from Alex. I fixed Felix with a glare. Are you going to tell me that you hate me again? said the fiercest of the alphas. I did not. I never did, actually. Maybe, I said, brushing my nose against his. Felix put his forehead against mine. I'll never forgive myself, and you never have to forgive me either. You can hate me, but you're not going anywhere. If you leave, I'll follow you. If you hide, I'll find you. I'm never letting you go. I'll never force you to show me love, but I'll never stop loving you. I'll never stop trying to win you over. Chastity, I've won every fight I've ever been in, and I'm not losing this one. You're the most important fight of my life, said the Alpha, taking deep, slow breaths. I kissed Felix because he drove me and my wolf crazy. He was rougher than ever, pinning me to the wall. He kept his hand behind my head so it would not hit the wall. Before I knew it, he tossed me on the bed and lunged at me, crashing his lips against mine, his hands gripping my hips. The heat in my stomach was so intense. His tongue explored my mouth. I was so breathless, I was lightheaded. I managed to pull away from Felix only for Alex to claim my lips again. He brought me to him, making me straddle him as he kneeled on the bed. I felt heat all around me. All the triplets were pressed against me. Calix pulled me from the eldest alpha, pushing me down gently onto my back. He settled himself between my legs as his lips coaxed mine open so his tongue could caress mine. I tangled my fingers in Calix's hair, sighing happily. After what felt like an eternity of Calix, the longest kiss yet, I struggled away from the triplets and to my feet, completely breathless and panting. Felix neared me, but I put my palm up, giggling a little. You're ready for your presence then, baby? asked Felix. I nodded weakly, and Felix carried me to the Christmas tree, cradling my head to his chest. Alex and Calix followed closely behind. Their parents looked at us strangely. They probably thought we had the most dramatic relationship ever. Felix nibbled on my ears and rubbed my shoulders while I opened one of the gifts from the triplets. It was a small baby blue box with a silver bow. I looked inside and found a set of keys. I looked at them weirdly. I don't want you to feel trapped. Trust me, I'll come after you if you run off, but you should be able to get around if you need to, said Felix, rubbing the back of his neck. Huh? I looked at the keys again. They were car keys. I ran outside. There was a sixth car parked in the driveway. A baby blue one with a silver bow on it. It was so cute. I did not know anything about cars. It's a Range Rover, said Felix. I had heard of that before. They must have spent a lot. 
I felt a little guilty for how I behaved earlier, but they had a lot to make up to me still. I kissed Felix, enjoying the warmth of his lips and embrace as the cold air whipped my curls about. I kissed Alex and then Calix. Calix tasted like chocolate. I noticed a mug in his hand. My tummy grumbled and the triplets took me back inside. Alex bundled me up in a warm blanket in his arms and Calix force-fed me hot chocolate while Felix set up a plate of food for me. My other gifts included a diamond tennis bracelet, a diamond necklace, and diamond earrings. I gasped. I know you're not ready for an engagement ring yet, said Alex, but I wanted you to have diamonds. All the triplets insisted on being kissed after the opening of each present. I found a really thin gift and unwrapped it. It was an envelope. I looked inside. There were four plane tickets and a brochure for a five-star hotel. I read the tickets. They were for the triplets and me to go to the Caribbean for the rest of winter break. I had never left the Packlands before. I wanted to take you away from here. Maybe the memories here are too painful. Maybe a change of scenery will help you heal and help us bond, Calix said tentatively. I kissed him. His kiss was slow and sweet. My first real kisses were with Felix, then Calix, and then Alex, but there was more to the story. I hated New Year's Eve almost as much as Christmas at the Alpha's house. A 14-year-old me was sulking. I hid in my tiny bedroom as I heard the celebratory noises of the pack downstairs. I was supposed to be working as a server passing out champagne, but the hired help had took pity on me. She was an older lady, possibly in her late 60s. She told me to go rest, Muffin. I sighed. Kindness was so rare in my world. The 17-year-old triplets were being fawned over by every teenage girl in the pack except me. I was tired of rolling my eyes at the girls tossing themselves at the would-be triplet alphas. They change girlfriends like they change socks. I heard a voice. Where is that girl? said the Luna. I quickly revealed myself, stepping out of my tiny room. She fixed me with a glare. You know you're supposed to be helping downstairs, she said. I heard the housekeeper send her on a break, said Felix, actually defending me. She didn't just run off like usual. Felix had begun to stare at me more and more the older he got. Sometimes he'd be cuddling with a girlfriend on the couch, but his eyes would follow me as I cleaned. I saw him take a picture of me once when he thought I wasn't looking and smile at the image he had captured. When I had glared at him, he had glared at me, hastily putting away his cell phone. Alex was looking me up and down. He was always pulling on my curls and grabbing my chin to make me look at him. He always said I needed to have respect for him and look at him when he spoke to me. I had been allowed to borrow one of the Luna's old dresses so I wouldn't embarrass them by looking shabby. The dress immediately became the prettiest thing I owned. It was shimmery and baby blue and flared out like a 60s dress. I like this color, said Alex, looking at the dress. Yeah, me too, said Felix, actually reaching out and touching the material. I recoiled at his touch. He smirked. Calix came over. Chastity, I have work for you to do, he said. That was really unlike him. He asked the least of me. I followed him. I was curious. It was minutes to midnight. We went to the backyard away from prying eyes. I looked at the frozen river in the distance, feeling afraid. They had dipped me in it once. I shivered. Here, said Calix, absentmindedly putting his blazer around my shoulders. I heard the pack members counting down to midnight. They reached number three and Calix said, Baby Blue suits you. I shrugged. The pack inside screamed Happy New Year. Calix swiftly and lightly pecked me on the lips. I jumped and put my fingers to my lips. He ran away. I spotted him inside. His current girlfriend whined, I missed my kiss at midnight. Now I'll have bad luck all year. Calix spotted me eavesdropping. I thought he'd kiss her passionately to show me I was nothing, but he pushed her away and shrugged at her complaints. He stared at me a lot throughout the rest of the party. I noticed his eyes were mainly on my lips. 
Calix's lips were still on mine, but he could tell my mind was far away. Mmm, I'm gonna make this trip really romantic for you, baby, whispered Calix. We all will, said Alex, smiling. I'll be really hot and you'll be sweating a lot, but it won't be because of the weather, warned Felix, his eyes lustful. I shivered. I want to take Chastity bikini shopping the day after Boxing Day, Felix said. Bikini shopping? I was nervous but thrilled to leave this place. We'll all go with you to help you pick out some swimsuits, said Alex, winking. Or we could just skinny dip the whole trip, said Calix, waggling his eyebrows. I giggled. So fucking cute, said Felix before he captured my lips with his while his brother started caressing my body. Their parents promptly left the room. Chapter 13 Bikini Babe I took a deep breath as I looked at the floor-length mirror in the dressing room of Fierce Bikini Babe, a store at the Pax Mall. I had wanted a one-piece or a tankini, but the triplets begged to see me in a bikini. It was a high-waisted baby blue bikini. I looked good. It suited me. I tried to push all the times Felix had called me fat out of my mind as I walked slowly out of the dressing room to face my eager mates. Their faces lit up. Felix growled playfully. Alex blew a kiss like he was a chef saying bravissimo. Calix had gotten a piece of paper with a 10 written on it. He held it up. I giggled and blushed, which set Felix off. Careful, or you won't be wearing even that much longer, warned Felix cheekily. They wanted to see almost every color of bikini, and they had over-the-top reactions to each. They saw me in red, hot pink, baby pink, yellow, black, white, silver, and gold. They bought every single one. I insisted on getting some cover-ups. You don't need cover-ups, grumbled Felix. That's what towels and blankets are for. That and wiping you off. You're gonna be all wet and sticky. Felix, warned Alex sternly. Felix seemed to be certain that I would lose my virginity on this trip. He always talked like that, but he had turned up the heat recently. Ever since I started kissing my mates, things were getting heated just as I'd predicted. This was what I had been afraid of, yet I found myself willingly leaving my room all the time and seeking out a particular triplet so we could make out. Calix was sweet and gentle, taking his time with me. Felix was hot and heavy, his rough hands working me into a frenzy. Alex was passionate and methodical, taking me a little further every time I sought him out. I could tell they were anxious for the trip. They were suddenly frustrated again. I was too inexperienced to know exactly why. I had a general idea, but I was not entirely sure I understood. Felix was the first to be blunt with me one night when Alex and Calix walked in on us making out and promptly got in on the action. I stopped them from taking my nightgown off despite the fabric being bunched up around my waist with my underwear and bare legs visible. Felix groaned in frustration. We want to make you come, baby, he growled. We want to hear your screams and see how your face looks when you have an orgasm. I was trembling. I had had orgasms before. I had touched myself before, but those climaxes were feeble. The pressure I felt inside my body when the triplets started to get sexual with me was so intense I was afraid of its release. I had heard of girls with multiple mates passing out because their orgasms were so intense. Mina's cousin was the mate of identical twins and she had spared me none of the dirty details saying the twins insisted on both being inside of her at the same time and thrusting until she squirted. She said her cousin was the happiest girl she knew, but I was nervous. I had three mates. Just one of their huge members was enough to make me clamp my legs shut. On our trip, would they all push inside of me? Could I handle that? I felt faint just thinking about it, but the animalistic side of me wanted that badly. I had just finished packing for the trip, zipping my new baby blue suitcase up. 
Alex came into my room to get my suitcase and carry it to the car. Romeo was dropping his sons and me at the airport. I sat in the back seat between Alex and Calix. Felix was in the passenger seat. The triplets had already said goodbye to their mother, each hugging her and kissing her cheek. She had nodded stiffly to me as a goodbye. It still bothered me how strained the relationship was between me and Luna. The former Alpha was seemingly indifferent towards me. The triplets bear-hugged their dad goodbye at the airport, and he also nodded as a goodbye to me. I was so excited to leave the pack house and all its dreary memories that I did not care if my mate's parents disliked me. Third person. When Chastity went to the bathroom, the triplets had a chance to go over their plan. They were sitting waiting for her in a diner in the airport, a stack of pancakes in front of each of them, and a stack waiting for Chastity. Her dream has always been to leave the pack house behind, reiterated Calix to his brothers. Taking her away on vacation to a totally different climate, tropical, sunny, will bring out a totally different side of her than the sad girl from the snowy pack house. And when that side comes out, you really think she'll relax enough to want to mate? asked Felix. She hasn't gone into heat yet. I really hope she does on this vacation. The timing would be great. If she goes into heat at the pack house, that'll be too emotional for her and yet another bad experience at the pack house, said Alex. Trust me, she'll be frisky with or without going into heat, said Calix, chuckling. Also, we need to find out what her main worries are. She's a virgin and there's three of us. That's intimidating. She might be self-conscious, too. Yeah, thanks to Felix for always calling her fat, grumbled Alex. Felix had the decency to look ashamed. Even if we don't go all the way, I'd just like to go further than before, said Felix. Chastity's POV I walked over to the triplets and saw they had a stack of pancakes waiting for me in a booth at the airport's diner. I grinned and pecked each of them on the lips. Felix was last and followed the peck up with a proper lingering kiss. The pancakes were so light, fluffy, and sweet, I was actually able to finish my stack. Your appetite has improved so much, complimented Felix. I could not help but wonder how he seemed to want me to eat so much when he had acted like I was too heavy before. I knew I was healthy, but Felix, Calix, and Alex always had such skinny girlfriends. Guys, all of your ex-girlfriends have always been so thin, like size zero, I said. Nothing's wrong with that, but, you know, I'm like a four, maybe even a six in clothes. It's not plus size, but it's not model thin, I said, immediately regretting my words. I sounded like a broken record always bringing up the past, but I was a little nervous to wear nothing but bikinis around guys who had once made fun of me. You're gorgeous, baby. But you don't believe my words, so let me show you with my actions, Felix said. How are you going to show me? I asked, smiling. I'm going to tickle your belly button from the inside, said Felix. Alex sighed exasperatedly. Calix laughed. I covered my face with my hands to hide my red cheeks. We were in first class on the plane. I sat next to Calix while Alex and Felix were opposite us. I slept on Calix's shoulder. It was a long flight. When we arrived, Calix gently shook me awake. The island was beautiful, even at night. The stars seemed so close to us here. The moon was so bright and hopeful. The air smelt spicy and was cool, not chilly. The roads were lined with palm and coconut trees. Everywhere I turned, I saw colorful buildings and lush green vegetation. I could hear the roar of the waves and smell the salt. A hired private taxi took us to where we would be staying. The Pointed Crown Hotel. We were staying in the presidential suite. My jaw dropped at how extravagant it was. There was a full kitchen with a stove, dishwasher, cupboards, and a fridge. The living room had a huge flat screen television. There was a dining room for six and a balcony that overlooked the sandy white beach and the salty sea. There was a jacuzzi on the balcony a huge bathtub in the master bathroom, 
and a huge bed in the master bedroom. Images of snuggling with my mates in bed and taking bubble baths with them fluttered through my mind. It was about seven o'clock at night on the island. I put on a light pink bikini while the triplets ordered room service. They popped a bottle of champagne and I had a few sips. The triplets were eyeing my bikini. The hotel food was delicious. All of the triplets were shirtless in their swimming trunks, their perfect abs and muscled chest on display. They wanted to take a dip in the jacuzzi. I was feeling so alive all of a sudden. I have an even better idea, I said. Yeah, baby, asked Felix. Let's take a bubble bath, I said, downing my glass of champagne. Alex poured me another glass and we all went to the master bathroom. Alex ran us a bubble bath. The tub was so huge. All four of us fit. I giggled as Felix tickled me and pulled me onto his lap amidst the bubbles. We had all kept our bathing suits on. I relaxed, leaning against Felix. It felt so good to be away from the pack house. I would have never imagined life would turn out this way and the triplets would be catering to my every whim rather than making my life miserable. I pushed those old thoughts away. It was easier to do on vacation. Felix was playing with my bikini top, and Alex and Calix were looking at me hungrily. You are so sexy, baby, said Felix in my ear. Aren't you going to reward us a little for this awesome trip? Mm, was all I could say. Felix's thumbs were tracing my nipples through the fabric of my bikini top, and it was making them erect and making me moist. I sighed happily. Baby, give us a little peek whispered Felix, licking my earlobe as he continued caressing my breasts. Alex and Calix put their hands on my lower body. Alex was rubbing my most sensitive area through the fabric of my bikini bottoms, and Calix was untying the side straps of the bottoms. How about this, whispered Felix. I'm going to take your bikini top off so I can see your pretty little nipples and suck them. Calix is going to take your bikini bottoms off and hold your legs open so Alex can finger your pretty little pink pussy until you come. I shivered and moaned, picturing everything Felix had just described. I nodded feebly, not able to resist any longer. My body wanted a release so badly. Felix slipped my bikini top off, tossing it onto the bathroom floor, releasing my breasts. The triplets groaned as they took in the sight of my breasts and erect nipples. I blushed. I felt so sexy because of their reactions. The triplets changed things up. They did not do exactly what Felix had said. At the sight of my nipples, Alex and Calix came towards me, mouths open and eager. They each latched onto a nipple and I squealed. Felix ripped off my bikini bottoms from behind. His hand rubbed my lower tummy before descending to my most sacred area. He gently explored my folds. It tickled as we were in water. Alex's hands had found my throat, wrapping around it and squeezing extremely gently while his mouth sucked my nipple mercilessly. Calix's hands were squeezing and massaging my thighs while he nibbled and nipped at my other nipple. I felt like I was losing my mind. Felix found my little love button, my clit, and pinched it gently. I want to eat you out, baby, whispered Felix. Let me eat that pussy for dinner. Ride my face, please. Okay, I said shakily. I put one of my arms over Felix's shoulder and the other arm over Alex's shoulder so they could easily support my torso while Calix grabbed my ankles. The triplets carried me from the bathtub to the shower, this way to wash the bubbles and soap off. They tossed their swim trunks on the bathroom floor. I tried not to stare at their monster erections while their six hands washed the soap off of me. They bundled me in a towel, drying me off in the master bathroom. We were all completely naked and sitting on the large bed drying off. I noticed my suitcase was not in the room. Have you guys seen my suitcase? I need my clothes, I said softly. 
You don't need your clothes, baby. It's a crime to cover that body, said Felix, his voice husky. I had promised to sit on his face. I bit my lip. Felix lay flat on the bed, and Alex and Calix supported my weight, lowering me onto his face. My shaky knees were on either side of Felix's head as I felt his tongue lick my folds for the first time. An electric current shot through me. I moaned and tried to move my pussy away from his tongue, but his brothers held me in place so Felix could lick my folds to his heart's content as I whimpered and pleaded. The pressure in my belly was so intense. Alex and Calix were helping me move my hips, guiding me, making me ride Felix's face as his tongue penetrated me. A scream escaped my lips as he latched onto my clit, sucking, licking, and nibbling it. Many unintelligible sounds were coming out of me as Felix pushed me higher and higher, and Alex and Calix began pinching my nipples, gently squeezing my neck, kneading my breasts and slapping my ass. I was caught off guard when a particularly hard slap from Calix made my butt cheeks quiver. I had not expected any aggression from him. I was feeling lightheaded, but Alex and Calix held me up. Felix was eating me out sloppily, his saliva all over my pussy. I rocked my hips against his gorgeous face. He started inserting one and then two fingers into my pussy, pumping me, preparing me for later. Oh God, I love you, Felix, I cried as he sucked my clit so hard and pumped me so fast. I was pushed over the edge. I screamed, coming undone. My juices gushed onto Felix's face and into his mouth. I heard and felt him groan happily against my clit. The brothers put me to lie on my back and Felix sat up, his face wet with my fluids, his eyes bright and excited. I know you love me, baby. I love you, said Felix, French kissing me to make sure I tasted myself. I was spent. I felt sleepy already, but they were far from done with me. Me next, said Alex, parting my legs kissing my inner thighs, working his way up. My legs trembled. Felix and Calix were laying on either side of me, stroking their huge cocks as they watched Alex eat me out. I screamed until I was hoarse, but Alex was merciless sucking and licking and nipping my already swollen pussy. I was a shaking mess by the time he was satisfied. I had rode his face until I came, soaking the sheet underneath me. Alex leant in for a wet kiss. I tasted myself on his lips. The edge of my vision blurred as Calix crept over, instructing Alex and Felix to each grab a leg to hold me wide open, spread eagled for him. Calix used three fingers to pump me while his tongue worked magic on my tortured clit. I was good at riding faces now. The triplets seemed proud of how quickly I learned. I rode Calix's face and touched my breasts, enjoying all six lustful eyes on me. Calix licked and sucked my folds and my clit, relishing my taste. He nipped down on my clit and I came screaming. He crawled upwards for a tender kiss. I was used to my own taste now. All right, little Goldilocks, you're all grown up now and your three wolves have eaten, so it's time for us to feed you, growled Felix. Three huge cocks neared my face as I lay naked, surrounded by muscled horny alphas. Time to learn how to suck cock, baby, said Felix. Chapter 14 Hungry Wolves My stomach clenched in anticipation. My mouth watered. Felix was closest to me. I put my hands on his huge erection. It was much too thick to hold with one hand. He groaned and his eyes darkened as I ran my fingers and nails lightly up and down his shaft. Good girl, he murmured. Alex was squeezing my butt cheeks and Calix had started to finger me. I shivered, my legs trembling. I kissed Felix's large member, planting kisses along the shaft. I licked the tip. Now try to take it in your mouth, baby, said Felix. I took as much of his erection as I could into my mouth. 
I choked and spluttered. He seemed to enjoy that. He was smirking. He smoothed my golden curls back and gripped it like a ponytail to help guide me as I sucked his dick. Sucking him made me even wetter, which is something I was not expecting. Felix started thrusting against my mouth's movements, gently at first, and then he was fucking my face. I spluttered and my eyes watered. Tears streamed down my cheeks as he came in my mouth, his warm cum hitting the back of my throat. Swallow, he instructed in a raspy voice. I obeyed, gulping it down. His cock left my mouth and was quickly replaced by Alex's monster erection. I tried to keep up with Alex's thrusting, sucking the eldest alpha as hard as I could. I tasted his pre-cum and locked eyes with him. He mouthed, I love you, Chastity, as he quickened the pace. He moaned, shutting his eyes tightly as his orgasm hit. Cum splattered the back of my throat and I swallowed it eagerly, already anticipating Calix's huge cock. Calix moved agonizingly slowly in my mouth, teasing me, a sly smile on his face as his brother's hands roamed my body. His cock was so smooth. I enjoyed the feel of it on my tongue. He moved slowly enough for me to savor the taste of his cock and his pre-cum. My pussy was gushing as Alex licked and sucked my clit, and Felix eagerly fingered my entrance. I had lost count of what number orgasm I was on. My vision blurred a little again as Calix grunted and started to thrust into my mouth quickly. I matched his movements until my jaw tired, and then I just let him fuck my mouth roughly as I spluttered on his smooth, humongous cock. He locked eyes with me as he came down my throat. I gulped down his cum, swallowing like Felix taught me. I was panting. I had never been so breathless in my entire life. The triplets were panting too, and grinning at me, looking at me in awe. Should we stop? asked Calix, his blue eyes anxious as they gazed at me. I shook my head. I was soaked down there, and I felt empty. I wanted Calix. Only one of us can go first, said Calix slowly and softly. They all looked at me. I felt a little nervous, hoping no one would get upset at my choice. I loved all of them. Calix, I whispered so low that had they not been werewolves, they would not have heard me. Calix's eyes lit up. He settled himself between my trembling legs while his brothers massaged my sides and kept their baby blue eyes on my face anxiously. Be really gentle, instructed Felix softly, glancing at Calix. Take your time, whispered Alex to Calix. Calix nodded eagerly, his eyes never leaving mine, an excited grin forming on his face. I loved his dimples. I cupped his face in my hands and he leant towards me, forehead to forehead, nose to nose, eyes locked. I felt his gigantic throbbing cock at my entrance. I was surprised he recovered so quickly from his orgasm, getting hard again in a few moments. I was in for an intense vacation. Ready? He whispered. Ready, I answered. I love you more than anyone else in this world, Chastity. I'm so in love with you and I'll make you my Luna if it's the last thing I do, whispered Calix his blue eyes meeting my brown ones as he pushed inside of me swiftly but gently, breaking my hymen. I winced. He paused. Alex and Felix continued massaging my sides gently. You okay, baby? whispered Felix anxiously in one ear. Chastity, you okay, Luna? asked Alex softly in the other ear, concern evident on his face. Yes, Felix. Yes, Alex, I murmured. They grinned in response to their names. Calix, I said softly, locking eyes with him again as the pain faded. He slowly rocked his hips, pressing his full, soft lips to mine. I deepened the kiss as he slowly thrust into me and pleasure quickly replaced the pain. The pressure in my tummy was back and it was building deliciously. 
Mm, I murmured. The triplets all grinned. Mmm, they chorused, copying me, smiling. I giggled. Felix groaned in response to my giggle. Alex's eyes went dark. You're so tight, Chastity, groaned Calix softly as he quickened the pace. Baby, move your hips more, whispered Felix encouragingly. I did as he instructed, rocking my hips meeting Calix's thrusts. I moaned. Good girl, murmured Felix, his teeth grazing my ear. I wrapped my arms around Calix's neck and my legs around his waist as he started to pound me. I whimpered. The pleasure was so intense. I was shaking. Calix was nose to nose with me again. I want to mark you. I want to make you mine, he whispered. A million thoughts flitted through my mind, but only one answer left my lips when it came to Calix. Yes, I whispered, my pupils dilating. Will you be mine too, baby? whispered Felix in my ear. I nodded. Yes. And mine? asked Alex, kissing my knuckles and each fingertip. I nodded fervently. Yes, yes. Calix was merciless now, pounding my pussy, making me scream. Calix! I yelled. He relinquished control, his eyes darkening as he barred his canines. He looked so glorious and powerful. He found the spot where my neck met my shoulder. I felt his teeth graze me and shivered. Then his fangs pierced the skin of my neck, swiftly followed by Felix's fangs on one side and Alex's fangs on the other, all three biting me and marking me theirs at once. I screamed as the intensity of my orgasm made me squirt and see stars. I must have blacked out. When I came to, all three were looking at my face closely in concern. I had only been gone a few moments. You okay, my goddess? whispered Calix. Another nickname. I smiled and nodded. You did so well, pretty little Luna, murmured Alex. I'm so proud of you, baby, groaned Felix. They were licking their marks, sealing them. Alex and Calix switched places. My wolf was anxious for the elder and rougher too. Felix was looking at me hungrily. I could tell he was eager to be the finale. Here we go, again. Chapter 15 Daddy Alex kissed me with unbridled passion, moaning against my mouth. He had settled himself between my legs while Calix and Felix were on either side of me, caressing me gently. Lie on your tummy, little Luna, said Alex. I quickly did what he said. I felt him part my legs, rubbing my weeping flower with his palm. He squeezed my butt cheeks and parted them. I felt his tongue flick out against the tight entrance to my behind. I squealed. The triplets all laughed and I laughed with them. I felt something cold between my butt cheeks. Huh? I said softly. Alex. You're too cute, baby, said Felix, his voice husky. It's lube, Luna. It'll make it easier to do what I want to do, Alex murmured in my ear. I felt his cock pressing at the entrance to my pussy, while his finger prodded my asshole. He slid into my pussy. I moaned. He started thrusting slowly and deeply into my tight pussy while he inserted a finger into my behind. I groaned. He pumped his finger in and out of my behind causing pleasure to mix with pain. He quickened the pace of his thrusts into my pussy. I could feel Felix's rough hands on my butt cheeks, parting them, keeping them open for Alex to finger my anus while he fucked my pussy from behind. Calix was kissing the nape of my neck and my shoulder blades to soothe me while his brothers pushed me to my limits. Alex was pounding into me, his hands now gripping my hips, while Felix took over fingering my anus. My face was buried in a pillow so my screams were muffled. Alex grabbed my elbows and hoisted me up to lean my back against his chest while he continued to pound into me, making my pussy drip. 
Alex, I screamed. Please, please, I whimpered, unsure of what I was even asking for. He cupped one of my breasts in his hand while the fingers of his other hand began to rub my clit. Calix was able to lock lips with me now that I was sitting up, and he did so eagerly. Felix was planting open mouth kisses all over my exposed tummy. I was whimpering as Alex worked me into a frenzy. I screamed as my orgasm ripped through me. My pussy contracting around Alex's smooth, hard, perfectly sculpted cock. It felt so good. The spasms of my walls around his huge cock triggered his own climax. Alex groaned in my ear as his semen spurted into me. My pussy clung to him, draining him of every last drop of his seed. Alex let me gently down on the bed. I lay on my tummy, panting and gasping, totally breathless and spent. But I knew Felix would want his turn. My body was already anxious to have his cock inside me. Baby, you're doing so well, murmured Felix. Turn over onto your back. I eagerly flipped myself over onto my back, immediately locking eyes with Felix. Felix leant towards me, pressing his lips to mine with a sense of urgency. I moaned as he nipped my lower lip, licking the skin he'd just bitten. My moan allowed his tongue into my mouth. He explored my mouth gently as his fingertips traced patterns on my sides. Do you want daddy to fuck you, baby? asked Felix. Yes, I said quickly. Yes, who? asked Felix. Um, I began. He slapped my breasts. I squealed. Yes, daddy. Good, baby. You learn so fast. Daddy is so proud of his baby, said Felix. Felix lay down on his back, and his two brothers helped me to climb onto him, straddling him. Felix was a fan of Girl on Top, which was surprising to me. His huge erection was at attention underneath my dripping pussy. My legs trembled. Lower yourself onto me, Felix instructed. I did as he asked and felt his cock slide deep inside of me. I moaned. Felix gripped my hips, moving me back and forth, showing me how to move, teaching me to ride him. I was enjoying the sensation. Suddenly, Felix sat up with me still straddling him. He brushed his nose against mine and lent his forehead to mine. He was thrusting steadily upwards, making me bounce up and down on his dick. Alex and Calix were watching my breasts jiggle. They licked their lips. Felix put his hands on my throat, squeezing lightly as he pounded into me from below. I whimpered. I had my arms around his neck and was clinging to him for dear life as he quickened the pace and fucked me harder and harder, faster and faster. Felix, I cried as I came, gushing my juices dripping down his lap and onto his sheets. Felix grunted, releasing his massive load into me. Some of it was dripping out of my pussy and sliding down my inner thighs. I went limp in his arms and he held me wrapping his arms tightly around me. Felix lay back, taking me with him. He put the covers over me. My skin felt so delicate all of a sudden, so I was grateful. I was still lying on top of Felix, my legs draped over him. Alex and Calix were on either side of me, lying on their back, panting and grinning happily. Felix's eyes were on me. You did so well, baby. Daddy is so proud of you, Felix said. Thank you, Daddy, I said softly, my eyes closing. I was drifting off to sleep when I heard Felix say, We went easy on you tonight, baby. But tomorrow, you're going to have to learn how to take more than one of us at once, okay? Yes, Daddy, was all I could say as I fell into the deepest sleep of my life so far. Chapter 16 Goddess I woke up still sprawled over Felix with Alex and Calix sleeping soundly at either side of us. Last night had been surreal. I could not believe my former bullies had spent all night making me come. 
I sighed. I was nervous about today. Felix told me I would have to learn to take more than one of them at once. I traced my fingertips over the three marks on my neck. It had really happened. The triplets had marked and mated me. I wondered if I was with child already. I had known this vacation might have been their way of relaxing me into the mating and marking process. I was officially their marked mate and Luna now, whether I ran off after high school graduation or not. Once marked, the bond was permanent until death and even after that, because losing a mate was the worst thing that could happen to a werewolf, leaving them changed forever. I slowly got up. My whole body ached and my pussy was sore. Felix got up, kissed my forehead, and started making breakfast. Chocolate chip pancakes, bacon, sausages, and eggs. He made me a sweet mocha frappuccino. I sipped it, loving the taste. Baby, you have the sweetest and tightest pussy I've ever had, said Felix matter-of-factly, looking at me with soft, loving eyes. Mmm, yes, definitely. And the prettiest, too, Alex added, walking into the dining area, fixing me with a dreamy gaze. Good morning, my Luna, yawned Calix, coming over to kiss my forehead. You deserve a reward for being such a good girl. They were making me blush. After breakfast, all four of us showered together, and the triplets took me to the beach. I was wearing the baby blue bikini that they all liked so much. We were at a gorgeous private beach with the clearest waters and whitest sand. Felix carried me into the water. My arms were wrapped around his neck and my legs were wrapped around his waist. He was holding the back of my thighs as he sat slowly in the water, me still in his arms. He kissed me sweetly at first and then got progressively more urgent. He moaned against my lips as his big erection rubbed against me through the thin fabric of my bikini bottoms. I broke the kiss, needing air. I relished the feeling of the warm water, lapping at my aching body. Mmm, my brothers and I will take you back to the hotel after our little beach trip. We're gonna strip you naked and pour warm oil all over your body to massage those sore muscles, murmured Felix. You'd like that, wouldn't you, huh, beautiful? said Alex. I nodded. Yes. Yes, who? asked Felix sharply. Yes, daddies. Good girl, said Calix softly. The other two brothers were enjoying their time in the water, rubbing my shoulders and running their fingers through my hair while I made out with Felix. I can't believe I'm really all yours, I said softly. Believe it, baby. You're ours, said Felix. Yeah, and if you ever run off, pretty little Luna, we will find you. And when we do, we're going to have to punish you for making us worry, said Alex. What's the punishment? I asked. Don't break the rules and you won't have to find out, said Felix simply. You won't hurt me, will you? I asked softly. Not at all, baby, but we will make you scream, said Felix. We might have to tie you to the bed, added Alex. And blindfold you, said Calix, winking. So you won't know how you're going to get fucked next. We won't take turns, baby. You'll have to handle us all at once. We'll stretch you to the limit, baby, if you test us, said Felix. I knew they definitely were not joking. If I tried to run away from them after I had already allowed them to finalize the bond, they'd be furious. They could not truly bully me anymore because they were deeply in love and in lust with me, but BDSM was definitely in the cards. I was a little worried I had accepted them as my mates too hastily. There was no going back. I wondered what their parents' reactions would be when they saw my marks. I felt smug thinking about it. I held on to Felix tightly, as I could not swim. I had never had the opportunity to learn. The triplets were all excellent swimmers. I remembered them coming back to the pack house with wet hair on Saturdays when they were teenagers. They would complete in swim meets against other future alphas of the packs. Felix carefully handed me to Alex, who held me bridal style in the water. 
We ate at a five-star restaurant. The food was out of this world. This vacation was really a feast for the senses with the gorgeous scenery, spicy smells, exotic tastes, Caribbean music, and caresses of the cool breeze, warm water, and the triplets. I was so exhausted when we got back to the hotel suite. I was nervous. I excused myself, going to the bathroom, stalling. Their monster cocks were so thick and long. How would I take them all? I stepped out of the bathroom and my three mates were waiting for me rather impatiently. I had a request. I'm really nervous, I said. Shh, baby, don't worry. Just think of a safe word. Say your word if anything becomes too much for you and we will stop, said Felix. I thought of a word. Goldilocks, I said, laughing. The triplets raised their eyebrows. You are our little Goldilocks, come to think of it, said Alex, pulling on my curls and watching them spring back into place. And we're your three bears, Felix added, pulling me into a bear hug. You're my three wolves, my triplet alphas, I said. Calix jokingly began narrating a story. Goldilocks was worried the triplet alpha's cocks would be too big and her pussy would be too small, but the fit was just right. I giggled. The triplets began undressing me. I remembered my request. Can I just take two of you down below? I asked hesitantly, frightened of triple penetration. I'll take the third cock in my mouth, I offered. No problem, baby, said Felix. Soon, I was lying on my tummy, completely naked. The triplets started pouring warm oil on me as they'd promised. Felix massaged my back, arms, neck, and shoulders, while Calix massaged my legs and Alex massaged my butt cheeks and reached between my legs to massage my folds. I was trembling. They squeezed all of my muscles and flipped me over, suddenly making me squeal. They laughed, grinning at my reaction as they poured more oil on me. Alex massaged my tummy and my pussy while Felix kneaded my breasts and Calix massaged the front of my arms and legs. Felix pulled me up, making me kneel on the bed. The oil had made my pussy and my behind really slippery. Felix pulled me onto his lap while I was still kneeling. He lay down and Alex and Calix helped me lower myself onto Felix's huge cock. I shivered as the feeling of fullness made my core wet itself more. Felix gripped my hips, looking at me hungrily as he rocked me back and forth. I whimpered. It felt amazing. Alex was behind me and he pushed me down onto Felix's chest. He parted my butt cheeks. I started panting nervously as Calix smoothed my curls and kissed my lips, gently murmuring sweet nothings to me. Alex's gigantic hard cock was poking my behind. He inserted a finger into my behind. I groaned as he pumped my anus with his finger, inserting a second one and stretching me with more oil. Felix continued to fuck my pussy agonizingly slowly. When Alex was satisfied, his cock slowly entered my anus, stretching it. I groaned loudly as he filled me from behind to capacity. I felt so full. I had two huge cocks in me. Calix locked eyes with me. He smiled, showing his dimples. He was so handsome. He made my heart flutter. I opened my mouth eagerly and he guided his cock towards me. I licked the tip and tasted his pre-cum, and then I took him in my mouth. He was large in length and girth. Tears ran down my cheeks, and I spluttered on his cock a little, but I began to suck on it. Calix used my ponytail to guide me as he thrusted into my mouth while Felix thrusted into my pussy, and Alex thrusted slowly into my anus. I was so overwhelmed. They were everywhere. I felt like I was losing my mind. I wanted to scream in ecstasy, but Calix's cock was almost to the back of my throat. You're amazing, baby, whispered Felix from below me as he massaged my sides and kissed my shoulders. You're perfection, Luna, said Alex from behind me as he gripped my waist and licked my ears and neck. 
I shivered. You're our goddess, Chastity, murmured Calix, not one to ever be outdone, especially when it came to sweet talk. I wasn't sure how much longer I could keep going. I was dripping. I had lost count of my orgasms, but I could feel a big one coming as Felix, Alex, and Calix all quickened the pace, switching the angles ever so slightly to hit just the right spots. I groaned as I felt it build inside of me. The pressure in my tummy felt so intense. I moaned against Calix's cock as Alex and Felix pumped me a little harder and faster, still trying to be careful because this was all new to me. I could feel Felix's hot mouth encase one of my erect nipples while his fingers teased the other one. He kept up a steady rhythm with one hand on my waist, helping me bounce up and down on his dick. Alex had both hands on my hips as he thrusted slowly but deeply from behind. He nipped at my shoulder and planted kisses on my neck, sucking on my marks. Calix was gripping my curls in his hand like a ponytail and using that to guide me as he pushed his cock in and out of my mouth. I was whimpering on his cock, tears streaming down my face, when Calix pulled out suddenly and grasped my chin with his hands, tilting my face upward so our eyes met. You okay, goddess? he asked. You need your safe word? Alex and Felix paused too, which frustrated both my wolf and me. I shook my head fervently, and Calix smirked, pushing back into my mouth while his brother started thrusting rhythmically again, slowly quickening the pace. I was so wet. I was dripping juices down into Felix's lap, which he seemed thrilled about. The first person to come gets tied up the next time we have sex, Felix announced from above me. Huh? Obviously that would be me. I protested, but it was muffled by Calix's cock. As if the alphas were enticed by the promise of bondage, they all sped up, thrusting faster and deeper. The buildup was delicious. I had never felt anything like it. My whole body was trembling. I did not even know whose name to moan. I just whimpered. Felix rocked me back and forth, pulling me down further to grind on him so that his cock was brushing against my cervix. He was huge. He definitely was making good on his promise to tickle my belly button from the inside, whilst Alex's movements were calculated and controlled. He reached down in front of me to find my clit with his fingers and stroke it gently. I groaned, spluttering on Calix's big, sweet, smooth, perfect cock. I loved my mates so much, every single one of them. That was all I could think about as they pushed me to the brink and I screamed against Calix's cock. I squirted all over Felix below me. He groaned, spurting into me, filling me up, just as Alex grunted and filled my behind with his load. My legs were trembling, but Felix and Alex were holding me up effortlessly, like I was a rag doll. Calix moaned as his cum spurted into my mouth. I swallowed everything and opened my mouth to show him. He grinned and winked at me, rubbing his thumb against my lower lip. I let my legs give out underneath me, exhausted, but my mates caught me and put me gently to lie down. Six hands started massaging all over my aching parts and three pairs of lips planted soothing kisses all over me as I drifted off to sleep. Chapter 17 Chef Felix. I woke up, draped over Alex's chest this time. His hands were in my hair, playing with my curls. He pulled on the golden ringlets and watched them spring back into place. He massaged my scalp. I moaned a little. Calix and Felix were on either side of me. My soft moan woke them up, it seemed. Felix parted my butt cheeks and began eating my ass. I squealed. I had not been expecting that first thing in the morning. His tongue darted in and out of my behind, making me tense my butt cheeks. I was leaning across Alex, my mouth pressed against Calix, savoring his taste. Alex bit my neck from under me, making me open my mouth for his younger brother. Calix's tongue dove into my mouth, exploring at a leisurely pace. 
Felix was now stretching my pussy with two fingers inserted into it while his tongue was deep in my anus. I groaned, wondering if he was stretching me because... Alex answered my unspoken question. Yes, eventually we all want your pussy at the same time if you can handle that, princess. He murmured his words, still groggy in the morning. My pussy throbbed. It was already deliciously sore. Calix was still kissing me, and I was getting lightheaded from the lack of air. I pulled away, breathless. I took a deep breath before Alex claimed my lips, cupping my face with both hands. His kiss was surprisingly gentle. I nibbled his bottom lip and he groaned, tangling his hand in my hair and arching my face upwards with his other hand on my chin so he could have better access to my mouth. Our tongues caressed each other slowly. Calix was planting kisses down on my thighs and calves. He kissed my ankles. He tickled the sole of my feet, making me squeal and giggle, breaking away from Alex. Felix inserted a third finger deep into my pussy, his knuckles at my hilt. I cried out and the three alphas all grinned. Felix started pounding me with his fingers while his tongue assaulted my sore behind. <sighs> I whimpered, my cries muffled against Alex's chest. The eldest alpha was gripping me to him with one hand cradling my head to his chest. Calix started massaging my lower back to soothe me as Felix roughly fingered me until I came. My scream was drowned out by a low grunt from Felix, who had gotten off on watching me come. I felt his huge, thick, hard member slide between my butt cheeks without penetrating me. He spurted his load upward onto my tailbone and lower back. I felt it dripping down my sides. Alex and Calix were each stroking their cocks now, watching me with black eyes. Some of Alex's pre-cum had dribbled out and gotten smeared onto my tummy from below me. Calix was leaning over me, stroking his cock. He suddenly flipped me over. I squealed in surprise, and the youngest brother grinned at my reaction as he stroked himself, watching me. I stroked him, too, with one hand. Alex got out from underneath me and went to my other side. Felix was kneeling between my legs, already hard again. Alphas needed almost no recovery time. I started stroking Alex with my free hand. Felix pressed his huge shaft against my swollen pussy, rubbing his member against my vulva. I shivered at how good that felt. He started stretching me again with his fingers, all four of them, while his thumb rubbed my clit. I tried to wiggle away, but the other two grabbed my waist and pushed me gently back to Felix, whose eyes were dark. I resumed stroking Alex's and Calix's cocks, while Felix resumed his delicious torture of my pussy. When he was satisfied, he leant over me, pressing a sweet kiss to my mouth. Alex kissed me, then Calix kissed me, lingering a little while Felix sharply penetrated me, making me cry out. I had shut my eyes tightly. I opened them to watch Felix's smirk as he rocked his pelvis against mine, grinding into me. My pussy was already throbbing, and I was a whimpering mess. Alex and Calix moved lower down on the bed, closer to my entrance. Calix reached up and stroked my face. Baby, can we try? He murmured, kissing my hand and the tip of my nose. I nodded weakly. Alex positioned himself, and so did Calix. All three of the triplets were between my widely spread trembling thighs. Oh my. Alex and Calix both pushed in at the same time, joining Felix in my soaked, slippery pussy. I was at my limit. My eyes rolled back in my head. They were all still, waiting for me to adjust to the triple penetration. You are doing so good, baby, moaned Felix in his raspy voice, his lust-filled blue eyes watching my face. I slowly arched my back, encouraging them to move. They slowly thrust into me, moving in unison, stroking my insides with their cocks. They quickened the pace ever so slightly while their six hands roamed my flushed body. 
They were bringing me over the edge. I felt it coming. The building of it alone was too much to handle. I was an incoherent, moaning mess. Hands kneaded my breasts, pinched my nipples, rubbed my tummy, caressed my sides and outer thighs, all while the three big mouth-watering cocks filled me. Oh, yes, 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 was all I could say. The triplets were smirking. They sped up and I screamed. They started to pound me. I could not bear it for long. The pressure was way too much. I screamed and squirted, wetting all three of their lower abdomens. They seemed delighted at that as they lost control and spurted into me. Three loads of cum coating my insides, splattering into me. I felt faint. My eyes closed. Sleepy though I had just woken up. They slowly slid out with a squelching noise. I moaned softly, drifting off as my three alphas snuggled up to me. I awoke again. It was mid-morning. I had woken up early the first time. My pussy was sore, and every time I moved a little, I started getting mini orgasms in my pussy. I inserted my own finger into myself, moaning at that. I was surprised to find that I was still really tight. I extricated myself from my alphas, put on a robe, and went to the kitchen of our hotel suite. Oh yeah, I was not allowed to cook stuff anymore. Felix, I called. I laughed inwardly at how not afraid of that big bad alpha I was anymore. He was more of a lovesick puppy now, and I loved that. Felix walked into the kitchen, butt naked, tight muscles everywhere, and his huge morning wood at attention. Felix, I chastised him. He yawned, stretching. You called, baby? He said, smirking. Put on a robe, I said, blushing. He walked towards me. I bit my lip. Do you really want me to? He asked with a knowing smile. I tried to stop my lustful eyes from trailing all over his massive, muscled form. Of course, I did not really want him to. I shrugged, my cheeks burning. Felix started making my favorite, pancakes, rather than order room service. He liked cooking for me, it seemed. I had no idea where he had gotten a big fluffy white chef's hat, but he had one atop his ruffled shiny hair. He looked so cute. He grinned at me, deepening his dimples. Ugh, my heart. It was probably unsanitary to cook naked, but Felix and I had put our mouths everywhere on each other already, so maybe that didn't apply. He made enough for everyone, but Alex and Calix remained asleep. I was surprised me calling Felix didn't wake them up too. Should I go get Alex and Calix? I asked Felix sweetly. Who are those people? Joked Felix, piling up my plate with pancakes. Chocolate chip, my absolute favorite. Thank you for making me breakfast, baby, I said brightly. Felix grinned at hearing his second favorite word from me after his name, baby. Maybe baby was the favorite and Felix was second. He leaned in for a gentle kiss, his lips warm and sweet from the hot hazelnut chocolate coffee he had also made. Alex walked in just then, wearing his boxers. Calix followed behind him, yawning. Calix was also in his boxers. He laughed at Felix being just in the chef's hat. Alex rolled his eyes, but had a smile on his face at his brother's antics. Great hat, complimented Calix, giving a thumbs up. Felix nodded, winking as if to say he already knew how great his hat was. The pancakes were amazing, and so were all the sides he had made, especially the hash browns. I still had to get used to this. All the triplets were being so nice to me. More than nice. I knew that they really cared now. I knew if I got pregnant, I would not be able to go anywhere. I did not want to leave them, but I did want to track down my parents. I wanted to get my hands on my own money somehow to pay back the former Alpha and Luna. I knew that did not really make sense because I would technically inherit all of that money as the triplets mate. I was marked, triple marked, and that was eternal. It could not be undone. Rejections of mates were only valid prior to marking and mating. Once both had been completed, 
a verbal rejection was just a bunch of empty words. Also, leaving a mate, or mates in my case, by whom you had been marked was excruciating for both sides. The pain worsened with the distance and the passage of time, so it was maddening, and the mates would rush back to each other. Mother Nature really did not play with her wolves and their mates. But would the triplets let me find my parents? Would they let me work a real job? For the second question, by they I meant Felix and his desire for me to be a trophy wife. What's on the agenda for today? I asked. The triplets exchanged conspiratorial glances. Something big, said Felix. And unexpected, said Alex. And yet, completely obvious, added Calix. They were all grinning. Huh. Chapter 18. Surprise. Goldilocks was in the shower while her triplet alphas had a meeting. The topic of discussion was her, of course. Felix, Alex, and Calix were gathered around the kitchenette's counter on high stools talking in hushed tones so Chastity would not overhear them. We never expected to get this far this quickly, Calix said. But my idea of taking her away from the sight of her painful pack house memories worked like a charm. Exactly, so we can go ahead and ask her. She's marked, she's mated. She made her decision, Alex said, nodding. It's a bit too soon. Too rushed, said Felix, frowning. Alex snorted and Calix snickered. Says Mr. Baby, I fucking love you on the morning after we found out she was fated to us, asked Calix incredulously. Yeah, you don't have ground to stand on when it comes to rushing, Felix, Alex agreed with Calix. So what, snarled Felix angrily. She's in a great mood now away from the pack house. What's going to happen when we inevitably return to the pack house? What if she starts to regret everything? She's marked for life by all three of us, insisted Alex. Being marked is not the same as happily ever after, said Felix. She could still end up resenting us if we go about it wrong. Don't you want to ask her? asked Calix, raising his eyebrows at his brother, Felix. More than anything, murmured Felix. I just don't want to blow it. We're not going to blow it, trust us, Alex said reassuringly. He patted Felix on the shoulder. Calix nodded at Felix encouragingly. Come on, all for one and one for all, exclaimed Calix, putting his hand on the counter. Alex rolled his eyes. We're not the three musketeers, Calix, mumbled Alex. Nope, we're the triplet alphas, but the phrase suits us, Calix insisted. Felix rolled his eyes, but put his hand on top of Calix's. Alex added his hand on top of the other two. They raised their hands in unison. Calix was gleeful. I almost died of corniness just now, Alex grumbled. The cringe transcended me to another reality, muttered Felix. You guys are gloomy. That's why I'm the favorite, Calix said, smirking. You're mommy's favorite, not Chastity's favorite, sneered Felix, his eyes darkening. Ooh, someone thinks he's Chastity's favorite, chuckled Calix. Alex grinned. Felix actually blushed. Because I am. You two wouldn't get our bond. It's too deep and complicated for either of you. I drive her crazy, and I'm the first name out of her mouth when she needs something. That doesn't make you the favorite, Alex said. And you're both being so childish. Enough talk of favorites. You're not 11. You're 21. Get it together. And with that admonishment from the eldest, the triplets quieted down. Chastity's POV I was relieved to shower alone, actually. The triplets could make even a five-minute shower an overwhelming and exhausting experience, after which I had no energy to go anywhere or do anything. I decided what to wear without their input. They had recently taken to squabbling over what I should wear on mornings. At least one of them was always peeved if their pick didn't get chosen. Having three mates was intense, but they were so adorable. I put on a baby blue puff-sleeved mini dress in a shimmery chiffon material. I put on clear heels with clear straps. I hoped I could walk in these. I had no idea what we were doing or where we were going. 
My wolf reminded me it did not matter if the heels were comfortable or not. I had three mates. Someone would carry me if need be. I grinned at the thought. Baby, came a voice from the other side of the bedroom door. Ready, Felix, I said, opening the door to reveal the middle triplet with a huge grin on his face. He looked so handsome in a baby blue shirt that matched his gorgeous eyes perfectly and slack soft black pants. Alex and Calix were wearing the same thing. Where are we going, I asked. The triplets glanced at each other. Pack a nightgown and a change of clothes for tomorrow and any toiletries you might need, instructed Alex. Oh, it was a trip within a trip. Alex helped me pack a duffel bag quickly. The triplets each had a backpack already. Felix held my duffel bag, leading me to the car they had rented to drive around the island. I'm so excited, I told him. He pressed his lips against mine eagerly, without warning, leaving me breathless. His fingers traced his mark on my neck and made me shiver. You're happy? he asked. I knew he meant to ask if I were happy about the mark, about being marked by them, belonging to them permanently now. I bit my lip. It was easier to block out painful memories while I was away from the pack house. I would like it to work, was all I could say. Felix's face fell a little. He sort of winced. My wolf whimpered. I just, I'm trying really hard. I, I did not know what to say. I was afraid to get too comfortable with them. I was so scared of being hurt by them now. It was easier to withstand their cruelty when I had been convinced that I hated them. I could not bear any cruelty from them now that I knew I was in love with them. Don't give up on me, okay? I asked Felix, my eyes wide, looking up at him. He seemed surprised. I would never. Don't give up on us. Any of us, Felix added. Felix tossed my duffel bag in the truck next to their backpacks. He sat in the driver's seat waiting on his brothers. I was not sure what they were doing. I sat in the passenger seat, nervously twiddling my thumbs, sneaking glances at Felix, who was now deep in thought. Why couldn't I have just said, yes, I'm happy, and left it at that? My wolf was nagging at me incessantly. I could not take her complaining anymore, and I genuinely hated hurting Felix, even though he had had no problem hurting me in the past. I sighed deeply. He looked over at me. I climbed into his lap straddling him where he sat in the driver's seat. He smirked, raising his eyebrows in surprise. He broke into a wide grin. I grabbed his face and pulled him to me eagerly. He matched my enthusiasm, launching himself at me, kissing me forcefully, nipping at my lips and making me gasp and moan. We explored each other's mouths with our tongues. Felix was rocking me back and forth on his lap, making me wet. The huge bulge in his pants nudged at my core. My short baby blue dress got hiked up. Felix latched onto my neck, found his mark, and bit it, making me moan. He sucked on the area. Without warning, Felix reached under my dress and felt my damp underwear. I heard him unzipping his pants. The sound made me shiver in anticipation. He freed his large member, thick and long with pre-cum dripping from the tip already. He moved my underwear to the side and penetrated me, filling me, stretching me. I groaned loudly and Felix grunted. Baby, was all he could say, his voice husky and his eyes dark as he thrust upwards into me. My pussy gripped around him. He stroked my walls, wrapping me up tightly in his arms, cradling me to him, burying his nose and face in my hair. He began to thrust widely making my pussy clench around him and weep as he filled it again and again. I could not hold back my moans and cries. His hands found my throat, clasping it. He was always so rough and I relished it. He held me by my throat, squeezing slightly as he quickened his thrusting, making me whimper. He pounded me relentlessly until I was a shaking mess. My orgasm ripped through me, making me cry out and groan, but Felix did not let up. He kept fucking me as I rode out my orgasm, intensifying it. I was almost limp when he finally came and splattered my insides with his load. 
He kissed my forehead. I was not sure when I fell asleep or when Alex and Calix joined us, but when I awoke, it was sunset and we were boarding a gorgeous yacht. She's awake, murmured Calix, lifting me up from where I had been sleeping in the back seat, my head cradled in Alex's lap as he stroked my hair. I was momentarily confused. The middle alpha had tired me out. I looked at the beautiful pleasure ship, a glistening white yacht on the sparkling and shimmering sea. The sun was dipping below the horizon, making the water shine. Calix carried me up to the boat. He showed me the emblem on her side, since boats were called she, apparently. We had her name changed, see? Calix said excitedly. I rubbed my eyes, blinking in the evening sun. I was still a bit groggy. I peered at the word. I gasped. The yacht was named Chastity. Chapter 19. All Aboard. The yacht was named Chastity. I giggled and Calix kissed me sweetly. He took me to the bedroom we would stay in on board. It was gorgeous, decorated in rich warm browns and sparkling whites and creams with accents of gold. The color scheme gave the room a homey feel to it, despite the luxurious decor. There was a small bar right there in the bedroom. Calix tossed his backpack off to the side of the bed and continued carrying me around like I was a princess. He showed me the master bathroom, with its huge tub and shower, the indoor pool, the hot tub, the kitchen, the living room, the dining room, the theater, and the library. There were other bedrooms and bathrooms, but we did not tour all of those. Get all dressed up for dinner, okay, goddess, said Calix, kissing my forehead. I showered and put on the only gown I had brought with me. It was a shimmery white gown with a high slit and a fitted bejeweled bodice. I left my curls down as usual and did my makeup carefully with winged eyeliner and a nude rose-colored lipstick. I put on heels. I was strangely nervous for some reason. My pulse was racing and I kept fidgeting even though it was a pretty comfortable dress. I met the triplets out on the deck. There were fairy lights twinkling everywhere and a table set for four with a violin quartet nearby playing music. The moon was overhead with her stars. They all shone on the calm sea. The triplets all looked so dashingly handsome in their suits. They grinned when they saw me, but they seemed nervous too. I went up to them and stood on tiptoes to kiss each of them. Felix's kiss was surprisingly sweet and tender. Calix shocked me by kissing me so passionately and leaving me breathless. Alex's kiss was long and lingering. I felt giddy afterwards. They led me over to my chair and they all took their seats. The meal was being cooked by the head chef of a five Michelin star restaurant. The food really was spectacular, but I could hardly eat any of it. I kept waiting for something to happen. I realized my anxiety could be me picking up on my mate's feelings. Maybe they were anxious about something. Chastity, said Alex suddenly, looking at me his baby blue eyes wide and sparkling in the moonlight. He took a deep breath. Felix was fidgeting a lot on Alex's left, and Calix was tapping his foot on Alex's right. I had never seen the cool-as-a-cucumber triplets look so nervous, almost fearful. I waited with bated breath for whatever this big announcement was. Chastity, Alex said again glancing in turn at each brother. We love you. Deeply, added Felix. I grinned. Yes, deeply, said Alex. Wholeheartedly, specified Calix. Even though the triplets were identical, the youngest Alpha's expressions always made him seem to have a softer and sweeter face, whereas Alex's looks took on a classic edge, and Felix made the same features look rugged. I admired them quietly. And we want to spend the rest of our lives with you, continued Alex. His eyes were glistening. 
We don't ever want to be apart, Felix said, his voice husky. We've always dreamed of finding our mate, and we were thrilled when we found out it was you, Calix said sweetly. We know that we hurt you in the past, admitted Alex in a solemn tone. But we've grown up. We have nothing but love for you, and we want to show you that forever. Will you stay with us? Felix asked softly. And make us the happiest triplets in the world? Calix asked. I giggled. By becoming our wife, Alex said, brandishing a blue velvet box and opening it to reveal a three-stoned engagement ring. I gasped. Alex got up and came closer, getting down on one knee in front of me, holding up the ring. Felix and Calix also came to either side of the eldest Alpha and got down on one knee. It was so cute. They looked adorable and really wide-eyed and a bit frightened. There was a tiny, nasty part of me that saw this as the best opportunity thus far to crush them to rip their hearts out and stamp on them. I buried that part of me. The truth was, I wanted to be with them. I wanted to be happy. I deserved it. On closer inspection of the ring, all three stones were identical, fitting. They were princess cut light blue diamonds and the band was white gold. I held out my hand waiting for Alex to put on the ring. There was a long silence before I realized I had not said yes yet and the triplets were exchanging worried glances from down on their knees. I sniffled. Yes, I managed to say. The triplets broke out into huge smiles. Alex slid the ring on me. It sparkled, looking so iridescent in the moonlight. The triplets scooped me up into a group bear hug. I giggled. Before I knew it, I was back in our new bedroom. My head lay in Calix's lap with my lips pressed against his. He was bending over me as I looked up at him, making it an upside down kiss. His lips were so soft, full, and warm, and his taste and scent drove me wild. I felt Alex slide my underwear off and part my legs. I gasped against Calix's mouth when I felt Alex's tongue lick me, parting my folds. Every broad lick of my vulva parted my folds and made me squeal. Calix had slipped his tongue into my mouth, exploring me gently. My wolf whimpered, wondering where Felix was. I broke apart from Calix and looked around. Alex was sucking my vulva now. I shivered. Felix came into the room holding more champagne. I extended my hand to him and he kissed my palm. He tried to hand me the bottle of champagne, but I refused that, pulling him to me. He laughed at my enthusiasm. Over the next few moments, all of our clothes came off. Before I knew it, I was sitting in Calix's lap, facing away from him, his hands reaching down and parting my thighs to explore my pussy. Felix was latched onto one of my painfully erect nipples, and Alex was sucking the other. I tangled my hands in Felix's and Alex's hair as they swirled their tongues around my nipples, and I turned my head so I could lock lips with Calix again, savoring the sweetness of his soft, slow kisses. I was soaked already. Alex kissed his way down, and so did Felix. They were both between my thighs, kissing my inner thighs. Calix was still fondling my folds. The triplets made me open my legs wider, giving them all better access to me. Felix kissed my core, finding my clit and sucking it. I sighed happily. Alex inserted a finger into me, pumping it in and out gently. I whimpered a little. He added a second finger and then a third. Meanwhile, Calix caressed my inner thighs with his rough palms, keeping me spread eagled. I shut my eyes tightly, lost in all the sensations, listening to the sound of my own ragged breathing and that of the triplets. The triplets lifted me easily, and I was placed to straddle Alex, who was lying down. Calix was still behind me, and Felix stood over us. Alex's huge cock was at attention. I lowered myself onto it until it was completely buried in me. I moaned at the intense intrusion. 
Alex sat up, brushing his nose against mine and cupping my face with his hands. Calix was gently prodding my behind with his long, thick member. I heard a squirting sound and felt something cold between my butt cheeks. Calix slid in slowly, inch by inch. I held my breath while he was penetrating me anally. I felt so full. I cried out as Calix readjusted himself. Alex moved a little and my pussy started to throb. Felix grasped my chin, making me look up at him. He was glorious, perfectly sculpted from head to toe. They all were. I took Felix in my mouth, relishing the taste of his smooth, hard, thick cock. He thrust gently in and out of my mouth as Alex and Calix started to move. I moaned against Felix's cock. He hissed at the vibration and threw his head back. I sucked him harder, liking his reactions. His breathing was coming faster. Mmm, chastity, my baby, growled Felix, his voice so deep and raspy. Alex and Calix were moving rhythmically, filling me and sliding out again and again. I felt my whole body tremble. I braced myself with one hand on Alex's shoulder and the other hand squeezing one of Felix's butt cheeks. Felix was close, I could tell. I sucked even harder trying to steady myself despite being pounded on both sides. My thighs were shaking. Felix groaned and grunted, spurting into my mouth. I swallowed it all eagerly. Alex and Calix bounced me up and down faster and faster. Felix was watching them pounding me with lustful eyes. He came over and cupped my face, putting his forehead to mine as I reached my limit. I squealed. My pussy throbbed, clenching Alex's length. Alex grunted and released his seed into me, just as Calix came, filling my behind with his warm load. I sighed, cum dripping out of my pussy and my behind. I went limp in their arms. I felt someone putting me to lay down gently. Someone else was wiping me clean with a towel. Someone was holding me, cradling me to his chest and massaging circles on my back. Good night, Miss Thorne, said one of the triplets. I smiled to myself as I drifted off to sleep. Chapter 20 Secret Keeper Calyx I woke up lying against Felix's chest with Alex on my left and Calyx on my right. I carefully slid out from under Felix's heavy arm. He stirred a little but did not wake up. They were all sleeping peacefully. I breathed a sigh of relief. I showered quickly and put on a yellow sundress over my gold bathing suit. The world-renowned chef was still on board and we were still traversing the open seas. I ate at a bar on deck. It was covered so I was in the shade, but the sea breeze had easy access to whip my curls about. It was refreshing. The chef was named Chat Chevalier and was from Chartres, a town in Loire Valley, France. He was a tall, lean werewolf with powerful-looking biceps. He had a sleeve of tattoos on his left arm, but only one tattoo in the shape of a band around his right wrist. Upon closer inspection, the band was two girls' names in cursive drawn all the way around. Josephine et Genevieve. He had dark ash blonde hair, tan skin, and deep brown eyes. His sous chef was a muscular werewolf just a bit shorter than him with dark eyes, dark glossy wavy hair, and deep olive skin. He was named Sachin Singh and was from Jaipur, India. He told me he lived near somewhere called the Pink City. They both had heart-stopping handsome looks but were humble and kind. Of course, I only had eyes for the triplets. Shot, I asked the head chef, Shot Chevalier. Doesn't that mean cat in French? Oui, exactement, he said. Yes, exactly. Vous parlez français, Madame Thorne? Do you speak French, Miss Thorne? J'ai fait, j'ai parlé un peu de français. I do, I speak a little French. Genevieve et Josephine sont fils? Genevieve and Josephine are your daughters? I pointed to the right band tattoo on his wrist. He smiled. Josephine is my mate and wife, and Genevieve is our little daughter, yes. 
he said in a thick French accent. He acts as if he's 80, exclaimed Sachin. I laughed. Sachin looked to be about 25 and Chat looked about 35. Why did they name you Cat? I asked. Because he's grumpy and sneaky, Sachin said, clearly very good friends with his boss. His boss nudged him playfully. It's because I am regal, cunning, and proud like a cat, and my mother loves cats. My siblings are Catherine and Cheshire. Wow, dedication to a theme. I could not help but giggle. I loved cats, too. I had never been allowed a pet growing up in the pack house as a second-class citizen. I suddenly realized I could get one now. You don't like cats, Sachin? I asked. I like cats, yeah. My mate has a black Persian cat named Sphinx. He hates me, Sachin said as he sautéed some mushrooms. He's bright, Chat joked. He doesn't know what he's missing. I feed him extra meat to get in his good graces so he won't maul me when I go to her place, Sachin said, tapping his temple to indicate what a brilliant idea that was. I giggled. They made me a mushroom and onion omelet that was so delicious. I also requested truffle fries as a side because I had heard the triplets talking about them. Sachin made them and they were amazing. I was still talking to the chef at the covered bar and kitchenette area on deck when the triplets appeared looking a bit grumpy. We woke up and you weren't there, whined Calix. I gave him a big hug and stood on tiptoes to ruffle his hair. We always wait for you when we wake up first, he pouted. That was true. I felt a little guilty. I kissed his cheeks and he pulled me onto his lap and started eating some of my omelet and feeding me bits of it every other spoonful. Calix needs a lot of love, Felix said, kissing my forehead. Sachin, how about some cognac? It's ten in the morning, protested Alex. It's five o'clock somewhere, said Sachin, pouring the drink while Felix grinned. Calix wanted me to come swimming with him in the indoor pool. He scarfed down the basket of truffle fries, took a swig of his cappuccino, and hopped off the high stool, pulling me with him. Alex and Felix chuckled. I noticed Alex had some alcohol now, too, despite his earlier disapproval. The indoor pool was huge, and there was a sunroof at one end, so there was a sunlit end and a shady end. The sunlit end was warm and shallow, and the shady end was cool and a bit deeper. I couldn't swim, so Calix made me practice my breathing and blowing bubbles under the water. Then he showed me how to doggy paddle, but he put flotation wings on me because he was worried. He took them off and wrapped my arms and legs around his bare-muscled torso. He grinned and rocked me against him. Chastity, I'm sorry, he said suddenly. For what? I asked, leaning against his wet chest. For not standing up to my brothers when they went overboard with you when I was younger, he mumbled. I smiled. I kissed him. I would never let them have their way now, ever. But it doesn't matter now because they're different. Everything is different, he whispered, his forehead against mine as he walked, carrying me across the pool, the water lapping at us. I forgive you, Calix. You especially, I said softly feeling a little embarrassed recalling when I tried to separate him from the others. Thank you, Chastity, murmured Calix against my lips. He kissed me with so much emotion. I became a little teary-eyed. I broke apart from him. Calix, I breathed. Yeah, he said quietly. You're your mom's favorite, right? I asked. It was commonly believed in the pack that Calix was the Luna's favorite. Her little angel, her youngest. The former alpha favored his elder, tougher boys. Calix smirked. Yeah, but both our parents love all of us. I knew that for sure. The parents adored the triplets and were so proud to have produced three alphas in one go. Our pack was famous because of the identical triplet alphas. They had actually been interviewed on werewolf late-night talk shows before because everyone in werewolf country was fascinated by them. So, you know her really well? Like you guys talk, I asked hesitantly. Yeah, she tells me more than the others. She even comes to me sometimes to talk when her and dad fight, but they hardly fight, so that's only every couple of months, Calix admitted. Bingo. He should know what I wanted to find out then.
Tell me honestly, why does the Luna dislike me so much? I asked. Calix was hesitant. He thought about it for a few moments, seemingly picking out the right words to convey what he wanted to say to me. He was always the most careful with my feelings and the most gentle physically. She had a problem with your mom, Calix admitted. An old feud, perhaps. Yeah, I prompted him. Maybe I should have told you this sooner. Don't be mad, okay? Calix said, giving me his famous puppy dog eyes. Calix had a huge fan club of girls in the pack because of these puppy dog eyes. He was widely considered a sweetheart. Alex was a classic heartthrob, and Felix was a bad boy. My pulse quickened. I could tell Calix was listening to my heartbeat as he quickly tried to placate me by telling me the supposed secret. The reason why my parents took you in was not just to repay the debts. That was a cover. Felix doesn't know this, by the way. Alex knows as the eldest. Father handed over a lot of alpha responsibilities to him, said Calix. Poor Felix was in the dark just like me. A cover? Calix began his tale. My mother always hated her stepbrother's mate. She felt the girl was a bad influence, and she thought his mate was the one who introduced him to drugs. You see... My mother's father married twice, so my mother gained a little brother she wasn't biologically related to, but loved all the same. He grew up and married this girl my mother hated. My mother and her stepbrother became estranged, so she never knew what was going on with him. He had a daughter with the girl mom hated, and when she was a child, the couple got into some trouble with some dangerous people. Mom begged Dad to pay off their debts because she loved her little stepbrother so much, even though they'd been estranged since his marriage. My parents paid off the debts, but the couple still skipped town because they had made some enemies. They thought a life on the road wasn't good for their little daughter, so they dropped her off at the pack house without so much as a phone call or note. They just left the little girl. My mom thought the little girl looked just like her mother and behaved just as willful. She was not a fan from the get-go. Chastity, that little girl was, is, you. My mom and your dad were estranged step-siblings. Chapter 21. The Worst Memory Calix gazed at me, his eyes filled with worry. He was scared of my reaction. I was trembling a little. We were in the cool, deep part of the pool. Calix attributed my trembling to the temperature and held me close to his warm torso. He moved across with me to the warmer, shallow, sunlit section. He kissed me, trying to warm me up. I kissed him back instinctively. I broke away from him quicker than he would have liked. He frowned. Alex knows about this, too. I asked. Yeah, mumbled Calix. He and I were wondering when we should tell you. We've only known since shortly after becoming Alphas after our birthday. We didn't grow up knowing this. We couldn't tell Felix as Alex knew he would blab or blurt it out to you whenever there was a heated moment, and we wanted to develop a good relationship with you first and start making you happy. It's been torture keeping this from our brother and you. We're triplets, and you're our mate. The bonds are so intense, but we were waiting for the right time. We didn't want to hurt you anymore, and you were already so overwhelmed by us. I'm sorry, Chastity, for not telling you right away, but I thought it was best, and so did Alex. Calix was pleading with me with his eyes. I was not angry with him, just stunned. So there was a real reason for the Luna's hatred of me. She had hated my mother before me. She thought my mother had ruined my father, her little stepbrother. I remembered the day my parents dropped me off so vividly. I had tried to block it out, but I couldn't. It remained a clear-as-day memory, visiting me in the form of a nightmare from time to time, like a red stain on white fabric. It ruined me. Flashback. My mommy and daddy were arguing. Was it my fault? I clutched my teddy bear to me tightly. I told him it would be fine, 
Don't worry about anything. Chalice, we have to go, insisted Daddy, tossing clothes in a suitcase. And we can take Chastity with us, Chase, said Mommy. No, if those men find us, they won't show any mercy. Not even to a little girl. The last person that double-crossed them ended up getting their whole family done in, yelled Daddy. My mommy sighed. Can't we wait a bit and talk about this, she pleaded. No, there's no time, he said. But Ronnie paid them off, she replied. He laughed sadly. But we saw something I shouldn't have. We were half gone when we saw it. We were baked, she said, lighting a piece of paper she had rolled up. He snatched the piece of rolled up paper and threw it away. Not now, for God's sake, Chalice, he yelled. You're stressing me out, okay? Sorry, I won't, she promised. She started helping him pack. How do we know they won't come for Chastity even at the pack house, she asked. She looked worried. They'd never. They're tough, but they're not stupid. They fear the Alpha just like every other werewolf. If they broke into his house to get at her, they'd be declaring war on the whole pack, and Alpha would have them killed, he explained. Why can't he have them killed now, she asked. I was shocked he even let Ronnie pay my debts. He's not going to kill for me, too, unless his family is threatened or insulted, he said. What if they hand Chastity over to them, she said, her eyes filling with tears. He hugged her. They'd never do that. Ronnie's not a monster. She hates me, though. She'll probably hate our little girl, she said. Ronnie loves me. She'll make sure Chastity has a fighting chance. She'll make sure she finishes school and has food and shelter. I can't say if they'll be close. Ronnie is a strange one. She hated her stepmother, but took care of her for over six months of her being ill. She's cold, but she's dutiful, he said. I don't like her, she insisted. We can't take Chastity. She'll be in too much danger. We'll call every now and then when we get somewhere safe to check up on Chastity, he offered. And when will we get back to her? She asked, looking up at him, tears falling down her cheeks. I don't know, he said, his voice cracking a bit. There were tears in his eyes. They bundled me up in a warm coat and drove through the snow with me in the back seat of the car. It was nighttime. It was dark. I was scared. I hated strangers. I was a shy girl. I had Teddy. That was my only friend. I hated school, and I missed a lot of days because Mommy and Daddy would be too unwell to take me sometimes. They would sniff the white powder. It looked like flour. That made them sick. They would smoke the rolled up paper and drink the drink that burned. I'd try to sip once. It burned my throat and made me sick. Why were they making themselves sick? They had tablets that looked like candy. I like chocolate, but not candy, so I didn't try those. Those made them happy, though. They would dance and laugh. We pulled up to a huge mansion covered in snow. The snow kept falling like the tears on my cheeks. They walked with me to the front step. They put me on the porch. They hugged me tightly. I asked them to hug Teddy. They hugged him and they cried some more. They blew kisses as they walked back to the car. They had left my suitcase with me on the porch. They gestured for me to ring the doorbell. They got in the car watching with the headlights on. I pressed the doorbell. A little boy answered. He smiled at me. I liked his smile. Hi, he said. Are you selling cookies? I want three boxes for me and my brothers. No, I sniffled, annoyed. I'm supposed to ask for Luna Ronnie. My mom? The little boy asked. I shrugged. I'm Calix. My mom is Luna Ronnie. My father's the Alpha, he said. He was boastful. I shrugged, looking back at my parents' anxious faces. They wanted me to hurry up. Something bad could happen. Get Luna Ronnie now, I said. Calix ran off to get her. Who is she to you? said another boy who came to the door. He looked the same as Calix. 
twins? I don't know, I said. I didn't know. I thought Ronnie was dad's friend or something. I had never met her. I didn't understand the conversation I had snooped on earlier. I'm Felix, said the boy. Okay, whatever, please get your mother, I said. Felix looked really angry, but huffed away. Their mother, Luna Ronnie, came. A third similar boy was peeking out. Triplets. Alex, go inside now, she said. The third boy ran away. It was just me and her. She started to cry. What's going on, she sniffed. My father cried harder looking at her. He started to drive away. The Luna noticed my suitcase. Where's he going? She demanded, crying. I said nothing. I didn't know. Stop, she screamed. She ran into the snow. The car sped off. Don't leave. I can help you, please. Don't leave me. Chase. Chase, don't go. Let me help you. Luna Ronnie tripped and fell in the snow, sobbing on her knees. She stayed like that until the car disappeared in the darkness. She let the snow fall on her. I could see her breath. I was crying too, but quietly. A man came outside and ran to the Luna. I could tell he was the Alpha. He picked her up and put her on their feet. Where are they? He boomed. They're gone, she wailed, her voice hoarse from screaming and crying. The Alpha spotted me. He was big and scary. I was afraid. She can't stay here, the Alpha said. I was scared. I knew unwanted children go to orphanages and people treat them badly. But no one adopts them unless they're babies. That's what someone told me once when we watched Annie, a movie about orphans. Annie got adopted, though. She was special and a good singer. I loved that movie. The Alpha walked up to me. We'll inform the pack police and they'll organize what to do with her, he commanded. No, said the Luna, walking up to the porch. A true Luna could not be commanded even by her Alpha. I knew that. Every pack child was taught the basics about pack laws. The Alpha was angry. She stays with us until they come back for her, she said. They glared at each other. She'll earn her keep, he said. She can do chores, mumbled the Luna. She's not to play with my boys, the Alpha said. Think of the bad habits she must have. She's a little girl, began the Luna. I don't care. She can stay, but she's not our new daughter, so don't act like she is, the Alpha said. The Luna looked at me. She looks like her mother anyway. <laughs> said the Alpha. He took my bag and sighed. Chase was a good boy before. He really was. A sweet boy. Like my Calyx, Luna said. Yeah, sure, whatever, the Alpha said near the doorway. He's not a good boy now. He's a grown man with bad habits. The Luna walked inside. I stayed on the porch, crying. Hurry up, said the Luna. Too much cold air is getting in. I went inside, and she closed the door on my old life. Chapter 22 Freezing Flashback I extricated myself from Calix's arms just as I realized we were still in a relatively deep area. I went under immediately, but only for a split second. Calix's strong arms grabbed me and pulled me back up and against his chest. He cradled me to his chest while I spluttered coughing up water. I immediately began to wriggle in his arms, annoyed. Take me back to the pool's edge, please, now. I want to get out, I squealed, feeling panicked. Calix seemed dumbfounded. He hesitated. Take me back, I shrieked. Calix! He held on to me tightly. I just want to talk to you, okay? Let's talk about this. Let me go, I screamed. A memory flashed before me. I was under the ice in freezing cold water. I opened my mouth to scream and just gulped down cold water that burned my throat. The water was so cold it burned. Everywhere burned. 
like I was on fire. I remembered being so shocked that the cold could burn you. I fought and struggled with all my might, but I couldn't get out of the water. I couldn't push my way back out of the ice fishing hole for air because hands were holding me down in the water. I was terrified. Was this the last day of my life? I let out a blood-curdling scream. Calix actually jumped away from me, startled. He had relinquished me finally, but, of course, I fell under the water again. I had never really learned to swim. Firstly, because I never got lessons, and secondly, because once I realized I needed them, I was a burden to a new family and terrified of drowning after my experience being held under the water by my bullies, the triplets. I did not stay under for long this time either. Strong arms grasped me again. I looked up expecting to see Calix, but Felix was holding me, pulling me from the water. He scooped me up, carrying me bridal style, immediately out of the pool. My eyes searched for Calix, who was still in the middle of the pool, looking shocked and mortified. What the fuck is wrong with you? bellowed Felix, glaring at Calix. Didn't you see her struggling in the water? She was screaming almost a minute now. I ran here as fast as I could. I thought she was alone in the pool or something. Now I see you're here. What the fuck happened? The below deck indoor pool was on the opposite end of the large yacht from the covered on deck bar and kitchen area. I was panting, relieved to not be in the water anymore and too tired to protest being held anymore, even though I wanted to be alone right now. My wolf was whimpering at how sad Calix looked as he trudged out of the pool. I was trying to grab her. She didn't want to be held by me, said Calix softly, practically wincing at the thought. He rubbed the back of his neck. His dark, wavy hair was drenched and sticking to his forehead. He looked really cute, but I was so mad at him. Why did he not help me back out of the water as soon as I asked? He was holding me and keeping me in the water to talk. I was livid. Felix, put me down, I said, close to tears. They could hear it in my voice from the way they acted. Felix quickly but reluctantly placed me on my feet. Alex came dashing in a second later. Chastity, Alex said, rushing over to me. Calix and Felix both mind-linked me. I didn't hear you, honey. I was near the front of the ship where the wind is powerful. What happened? It doesn't matter, I said, sniffling. I held back my tears as best I could, but I was shaking. Alex reached for me to embrace me. No, please don't, I pleaded. I did not want to be touched right now. Alex, please, may I have a separate room from the three of you for the rest of the trip? Baby, said Felix softly, his voice sounding heartbroken. My wolf was upset. She wanted me to forget about the past and just be with the triplets. She couldn't stand the idea of sleeping separately from them. Alex took a deep, slow breath. Chastity, he breathed. You can have whatever you like, whatever makes you feel comfortable. But please, I'm begging you, let's talk about this first. I got even more upset, a little anger intermingled with my sadness. You knew all along, I said to Alex, my voice shaking. You knew my father was your mother's stepbrother. That means she probably even knows where my parents are. Wait, what? growled Felix, turning to Alex angrily. I shouldn't have kept that from you. I'm sorry. I meant to tell you when the time was right. I've only known since we became alphas and realized you were our mate, princess. I wanted you to enjoy life for a little bit. Not worry for once, that's all, insisted Alex. I was crying quietly now. Felix was moving towards me really slowly. He hesitantly drew me to him. My wolf purred at the warmth of his body. Calix came up behind me suddenly and hugged me tightly. I'm so, so, so sorry. I shouldn't have kept that from you, but I also shouldn't have blurted it out like that. I love you, Chastity. Do you remember New Year's a few years ago when I kissed you? I'd wanted to do that since I saw you on the doorstep of our house, murmured Calix. Calix was hugging me from behind, and I could feel so much of his skin against mine because we were both in our bathing suits. 
Felix was in front of me, holding me to him also. They sandwiched me between them, overwhelming me with their body heat. Alex was actually crying really quietly. He played with my damp curls and put his lips against my forehead, breathing on my face. I was crying too. Alex licked my tears off of my cheeks, grooming me. I was so furious and upset with them, but the skin-to-skin -skin contact with my mates was making me wet between my legs. I was shivering, but certainly not from the cold. Not with all their heat enveloping me. I knew if they tried to convince me to go back to the bedroom and talk, I would end up sleeping with all of them. My body ached for that. I half-heartedly pushed at Felix's bare chest, and he pushed back forcefully, making me gasp. He moved my hands away and kissed me passionately, lifting me off my feet. My bare legs instinctively wrapped around his waist, and he held me up with his hands under my thighs. I returned the kiss until I came to my senses. I pushed gently against Felix's chest, and he broke the kiss. I extricated myself from the triplets and stood apart from them. I put my hands up, palms facing forwards. I sighed at their heartbroken expressions. I won't change rooms if we talk about this, and if you promise no more secrets, I said, looking each of them in the eyes. Felix folded his arms, narrowing his eyes. I promise, but I never kept any secrets to begin with, he said, annoyed, glaring at his brothers and then turning back to me. I don't want to be treated as if we're one person. We're three individual people, and I didn't know about this. So why should I be punished by you too? Is that fair? He had a point. I felt a pang of guilt. He was right. They were different. When you were mad at Alex and I, you were so nice to Calix still at Christmas. So why now that you're mad at Alex and Calix, you don't want me in your bed? Continued Felix. Ugh, he was right. Sorry, Felix, I mumbled. You didn't know either. I walked over and hugged him. He embraced me warmly and tried to pick me up again, but I would not let him, though I giggled this time and his eyes darkened. We're so sorry, Chastity, said Calix. I promise, no more secrets. I did what I thought was best, said Alex. I'm sorry, too. No more secrets, I promise. I gave Alex and Calix a kiss on the cheek each. I didn't get a kiss on the cheek, complained Felix. You got a real kiss just a second ago, whined Calix. Alex rolled his eyes at his younger brothers. He held out his hand to me. I took it. I'll tell you whatever you want to know, Chastity, my Luna, Alex murmured in my ear, his lips brushing against my skin. Let's talk. Felix in a diplomatic fashion. Sorry, Felix, mumbled Calix. Felix was still seething. We thought you'd blab to chastity, Calix said. Yeah, except you blab to chastity, Alex said. I deserve to know, I said softly. Of course you do, Alex said just as softly. He pulled me onto his lap. I let him draw me to him this time. I wasn't lying when I said I've always thought you were beautiful. I wanted a chance with you. I didn't want to complicate an already horrible situation. That was selfish of me, and I'm sorry. Felix, I almost forgot I was keeping it from you and Chastity. I kind of pushed it aside. I just wanted to be happy. My wolf was completely satisfied with that apology, but she would be satisfied with any apology. She was team triplets all the way. It's okay, bro, grumbled Felix. He smiled half-heartedly. Chastity, whispered Calix, pouting with his big blue eyes on me. Do you hate me? No, Calix, I love you, and I love Alex. And Felix didn't do anything this time, but I love Felix. I love all of you, I said, looking at each of their faces. They all lit up. That's why it hurts so much, I said, closing my eyes for a bit. I could feel their smiles falter. 
I looked at them. I want to know where my parents are, I said resolutely. I don't know, said Alex, looking me straight in the eyes. I could tell he was being honest. We really don't, added Calix. Felix shrugged. Do your parents know? I asked. They might, Alex said. Calix nodded. So your mom really cared about my dad, even though he was just her stepbrother? I asked, raising my eyebrows incredulously. Yeah, she was devastated when he drove away and left you, said Calix. She had thought he was coming back into her life after being estranged because of her dislike for your mom, only for him to leave again, skip town and leave you behind on her porch. I winced. I sighed. Do you think your mom hates me? I asked. She doesn't, said Calix. She's afraid you'll hurt us. I wanted to roll my eyes. They had hurt me. She felt as though your dad, her little stepbrother, was taken away from her and ruined by your mom, explained Alex, his tone gentle and apologetic. She was upset when she realized we belonged to you like your dad had belonged to your mom. She felt she had let trouble in her house again. The Luna was not just a snob who was indifferent to her servant. She had cold, calculated reasons behind her dislike of me. Reasons she had hid from me my entire life. That made her unforgivable in my eyes. What does the Luna think my father would think of how I was treated by her and all of you growing up? I asked. They all squirmed guilty. Felix included this time. Any good father would be outraged, but your father isn't exactly a good father, baby, said Felix. What? I asked, narrowing my eyes. Baby, he left you, Felix said softly. He was protecting me from something, I insisted, fighting back the tears and springing up off the bed to storm away. Enough, bellowed Felix so powerfully I almost fell over. Alex stiffened. Calix regarded him with wide, shocked eyes. You're going to be the Luna of our pack, and you have to grow up, baby, demanded Felix. Your father and mother were irresponsible. They had substance abuse problems. None of this would have befallen you or them if they had made different choices. If you're going to hold us accountable, you're going to hold them accountable, too. Your parents were not a fairy tale, baby. His yell had made me sit back down. The tears streamed slowly down my face. Alex was rubbing my back gently. Calix squeezed my hand. I can always count on Felix to make sure I never stay the least favorite for long, Calix said brightly, trying to lighten the mood. Felix rolled his eyes and folded his arms, still standing. Alex was silent. I know they were addicts, okay? I said, even softer than a whisper. I knew they heard me being alphas and based on their worried expressions. I crawled to the middle of the bed and got under the covers. They all moved to come cuddle with me. Please, I just want to take a nap by myself, I mumbled into the pillow. I won't change rooms, but I want to be alone right now. Alex sighed deeply. He rubbed my lower back and kissed my cheek gently. Sleep tight, Luna, he murmured in my ear. He left the room. I listened to his slow footsteps. Calix gave me a bear hug and kissed both cheeks on my forehead. I'll be back, goddess. He hopped off the bed and followed Alex. It was just me and Felix now. I could sense him. I could smell him. I could feel how tense he was. I shouldn't have yelled like that. Baby, I know you want your parents. I want you to have that chance, but don't go running off to do it. I'll help you, Felix said. I shot up into a sitting position and stared at him. You mean that? Felix nodded. I launched myself at him, wrapping my arms around his neck and my legs around his waist. He caught me and held me tightly in his strong arms. He sighed into my curls and buried his nose in them, inhaling my scent. He rocked me a little. There's one condition, Felix said. I stiffened. 
You're not leaving with them once we find them, Felix said. I relaxed a little, realizing I was grown up now. I couldn't exactly just redo my childhood. I could get to know my parents as an adult if I could find them. What if they're not? I couldn't bear to finish that question. They just had to be. I needed them to be alive. Felix sighed. Well, by find them. I mean, find out the story. What happened? Even, who did it if they're, you know. And it's no big deal to kill the people responsible. What? I yelped. Felix chuckled. Baby, you're mated to three alphas. We have a huge pack to protect from rogues, vampires, wizards, witches, human werewolf hunters. You think we've never killed before? Even baby boy Calix? Calix, kill? I stared at Felix, remembering him saying he had went easy on me my whole life. Is that because he killed people who crossed him in the pack? In actuality? My wolf was grumbling like I was an idiot. Of course Alphas had to kill sometimes. That was why they were given such strength and speed to protect the pack from rival predators. I felt like I understood the triplets a lot better. They were cuddly teddy bears with me compared to how they acted when on pack business. I had just never seen any of that. I don't want you killing anyone to avenge my parents if it puts you and my other two Alphas in danger, I said. I could not lose my mates. What if my parents were already lost to me? I had contemplated walking away from them many times, but now that Felix was offering this vengeance, I was terrified for his well-being and that of Alex and Calix. And, said Felix sternly, your pretty little ass stays home while my brothers and I do the digging and the dirty work to get to the bottom of everything. Why, I began, that part is not up for discussion, Felix said, eyes turning black. Rather than feeling afraid or offended, my core got wet and Felix smirked, enjoying the effect his display of dominance had on me. He tossed me onto the bed. I squealed, but it didn't hurt. I giggled, waiting for Felix to pounce on me. I'll leave you to your solo nap, baby, Felix grumbled. I pouted. It's what you asked for, he exclaimed. I curled up in the bed. My brothers and I suddenly have a lot of work to do, baby, said Felix, turning to leave. See you tonight, princess. The things I do for love, I heard Felix exclaim dramatically as he walked out into the hallway to go convince his brothers. Would the triplets really track down my parents? Or my parents' enemies? The people who made them leave town? My wedding present might be a hit on some fiend or something. I sighed, lying in the empty bed. What had I just asked Felix to do? You're saying is you promised Chastity that we'd track down her parents if they're alive or kill her parents' killers to avenge their deaths if they're dead, said Alex, the eldest and most level-headed of the triplet alphas. Sounds like a cool